flow Token brother brought the flow Now it's time for the show Let's go What's going on, guys? Welcome to Revolver Live, the gaming podcast that says forget the past. The future belongs to the nerds. I'm the Beastly Gamer. Today, I'm joined by three of my best friends. One of them, welcome back. The king of all things destiny, Briar Rabbit. What's going on, sir? How you doing? I'm fixing all the Skype windows because somehow they got messed up while I wasn't looking. It's all good, man. Do your thing. <laughs> welcome, welcome, man. It's been it's been a long, hectic week for me, but it's always good for me to kind of unwind with my friends. I'm very, very happy to see you. I got a strong feeling we're going to have a lot of fun today. Wilson. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna. I'm yeah, thinking it's this debatable. Is be a pretty fun free episode. It's debatable. Well, <laughs> let's try. Let's try to do that. Welcome back, Wilson. We had your doppelganger here last week. Inner Black Ninja sat in, and uh, we all think he did a great job. Thank you to Inner Black, but we're always happy to have the Wilson back. How you feeling this week, my friend? I'm feeling good, man. Yeah, he, Justin, dude, you killed it, man. I'm not gonna lie, dude. And I'm a little jealous that you guys got him all to yourselves. So we're gonna have to get him back here yeah. again. Yeah. So, but, yeah, you know, I think that'd be awesome. He, he did a Breyer great job. said, uh, if we get you two together at the same time, then people will know that it's just, you know, it's not the same person pretending, you know, Peter Parker style, uh, Clark Kent style. So <laughs> he's, he's he's way more handsome. I'm just gonna throw that out there. You, you, you guys are real close, man. And I'm het row, you know, but. Yeah, you guys are real close. And, of course, the Harvey Weinstein of consoles, because we all know that he secretly wants to fuck them all. Gary Diaz. What's going on, my friend? I'm only interested if they're not. So- <laughs> <laughs> no. Fucking nailed it, dude. Just nailed oh, it. Oh, no. <laughs> Look at his face. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> What's going on, baby? How you feeling today, Gary? Been a little bit under the weather, so I need warm hugs, uh, lem sip, and a hand job if anyone's offering. I got, well, I got, on that last I got a warm one. drink. Dibs on that coffee. last one. <laughs> <laughs> you can have it this week, Wilson. <laughs> yes. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Revolver Live is a gaming podcast with six revolving topics, and you can be a part of the show, just like Super Dan, by submitting your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com. That's revolvergamescast at gmail.com. In fact, a few of our topics for today's show came from our fans. We go live every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern at twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. That's twitch.tv forward slash Briar Rabbit. The video is then shared on YouTube at Briar Rabbit's amazing YouTube channel and my subpar channel, Beastly Gamer. If you're unable to see the live feed or the video format, check us out in podcast form on Podbean, iTunes, or your favorite podcast service provider. And with that, welcome to Revolver Live, episode 12. What's going on, fellas? I thought it was episode 13. I'm pretty sure it's 12. Oh, it's yesterday 12. was Friday the 13th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, and our fucking power went out last night, dude. I was sitting here, and I was playing Iron Banner, and I think you've, you've been playing with me when the power's gone out before, and I'm like... Man, the wind is just out there, just blowing, dude. Like, I think there was one time I had a tornado warning. And I was playing with you, Briar, and I had to, I had to get right, off the. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Here. It is episode 13. Correction. Boom. You know what? It's something in this coffee my wife made. It's delicious, but I'm going to blame it on the coffee. Yeah, man. And the power went out, and I was, I was getting ready. I was in the middle of playing Iron Banner, man, and I was trying to get my tokens. And I was telling my friends, I was like, man, I. I don't feel like I should be next to my window. And right when I said that, the power cut out. So I felt bad. So I had to message him real quick and be like, yo, I'm okay. Like the window, nothing crashed through the window or anything. <laughs> the timing was Jeez. perfect. The timing was perfect, man. It just took too much power and effort to carry your asses through the Iron Banner. It's true. Know, it's, gonna, <laughs> it's true. I was going to say, you were playing Iron Banner. So it was kind of like a blessing that your power went out really, wasn't it? <laughs> Not yet. I haven't gotten my hunter cloak yet, dude. I'm, I haven't gotten man. it either. I, I got, got a floss. I got the helmet on my uh, Titan. That I love because mm-hmm. it reminds me of Prison of Elders helmet. If you're back to Destiny Year One, where the Prison of Elders Titan helmet had like wings coming off the side, and it was okay. utterly ridiculous, and I loved it. I loved every minute. Uh, so I did get the Titan helmet with the horns coming off. Beautiful, bastard. I'm, I'm uh, happy for you, but I'm jealous. Hunter one. Hunter Hunter helmet needs. Uh, I got. I got. You guys all been playing of, Iron Banner. What do you guys think? I, I think like I it. need. I think I need more. Th- uh, more than twelve pairs of fucking boots for all my <laughs> characters. That's all I get is boots, man. You need boots. I'll let your boy, dude. Come one, come all. <laughs> half off. Like I got you Wilson's on boots. Boot Emporium. 
Dude, I'm just going to set up right next to the gunsmith. He won't remember. Like, how many One times has that dude been? A, yeah, he's been, like, his memory's been erased, like, 44 times or some shit. Like, worried about it. Like, but, yeah, dude, I get a lot of boots. I get a lot of chess pieces. I've done good on the weapons, like, getting all the weapons. Well, most of them, the ones that matter. Mm -hmm. um, but, dude, I really, for once in my life, like, I really want this armor, dude. Like, I need it for my hunter, man, with the quick fang sword. I gotta have it, dude, and it's samurai keeping me like a samurai. Yeah, yeah, man. I want to weave out. I want to get in there and be an anime slice them, dice them all over the place, scumbag, invisible hunter. Yeah, it sounds like Kate when she plays. She's got a lot of that stuff too. I think I've gotten two pieces of armor and one or two of the guns. Um, I love Iron Banner. To be honest, I love any part of Destiny Two that uh, I can actually win in. And I, I was talking some shit to you guys uh, on yeah, Twitter. Yeah, you were. You were talking mad shit. <laughs> you know what? I think I could back it up. Yeah. And and, and I'm challenging mm -hmm. all you motherfuckers. Well, well wait till wait till so, private matches come and we may have to do a revolver versus revolver <clears throat> throwdown. Yeah, I mean I, and I I'm a new guy. You, and you I know cheat who heavily when I come hey, to this. Bring that. But you know who I look, look, Briar, I can, I, can, I can I can succeed that I'll lose to you and Wilson, but I'm not gonna lose to Gary's ass. And I don't give a damn if you're sick. Shit. I'm coming I for just you. Don't know. Cheat to win. Cheat to win. Me. It's in my DNA. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Uh, it's the only game I'm playing now, to be totally honest. Uh, I'm level 17 in my new character. I was playing that right before we went live today, and really it's the only game I think about, and that's a strange feeling because it's it's Destiny, Briar. You know, you, can, you know where I'm coming from, Briar. Yeah, I, I know. It's, it's weird because it's destiny and you know yeah. back in the day i was like briar i love you to death but this is the only game you play what the fuck is wrong with you son now that shadow version of myself was sitting next to me like what the fuck are you doing because 15 um, was a year where i literally did not play another game like it was an uh, entire year i i started playing destiny in all of 20 i missed every release in 20 just played destiny me too like you know i'm still playing the witcher i played the witcher last night Damn. <laughs> the witcher 3 i was playing the witcher because the, you game was so the, the new good. 4k so then they, they upgraded that game recently too on uh, psvr so it does look better than it did before because initially uh, psvr i mean ps4 i bought psvr oh. games last night so i'm sorry it's on my mind. Uh, PS4 Pro had a new update because initially CD Projekt Red did not intend on doing, you know, the visual upgrades that most other yeah. companies did. And they recently did that. I figured that might be why. I did buy some PSVR stuff because you guys know they got this big sale going on. And I played PSVR for about 20, 30 minutes. I, I actually completed a game. I can't remember the name of it, but it was pretty damn fun. And I bought Tumble VR, you know, just some cheap stuff. But I had to get right back to Destiny. I, I can't stop playing it. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not definitely not playing Witcher. PlayStation. <laughs> I was gonna say he's he's not playing that shit on PlayStation. How many chicks? How many chicks have you banged in Witcher? Um, oh, there's nine. been some. Two to this sex scene. Some relations. Yeah. yeah. To be fair, One for me, I was, I was playing in the room because I got that Steam Bar set up. Steam. You got me doing. It. Sorry. Steam box set up. Streams from my PC. Box. And of course. Sitting in the living room on the big TV, <laughs> don't you know? I come to the one of the sex scenes and I'm like, <laughs> "This is not what I'm usually doing up in that office." <laughs> Go away, Daddy's working. Go away, Daddy's working. He's trying to cover the TV. I've got to be honest with you. As soon as I got to Novigrad, the plot went downhill and it just became whoring simulator for me. I was just kind of it. I kind of do enough local quests to get enough money for my next session, and that was it. I was away. <laughs> great they, i never they, left that, that game you know i didn't play a ton of it but you know the one or two sex scenes or the love making scenes i saw were pretty passionate man it yeah. looked like you know a daytime soap opera with you know gratuitous nakedness i really enjoyed it but i don't know if if that's my favorite game when it comes to the sexual aspect i think that uh, mass effect 2 really pulled me in if you know what i mean it was a, a pretty fucking epic game when it came to that Weird. Yeah, huh? I've never actually judged any video game yeah. based on sex <laughs> in the game. Weird, I've huh? never actually even thought about it. Yeah. It's a good time. Thinking about it now. I'm thinking about when it you, now. It's when a you whole play new the sort of games that I do, it's it's one of the key <laughs> core components. It's one of the four pillars of why I buy a game. I know. I got to. I got to rethink how I rate my games from now yeah, on. Right? It has to be a factor. It's a whole new rating yeah. system. Wilson's right. There's Life graphics, changing. sound. There's of course fun factor. Oh, I remember. And then. 
fucking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fun factor fucking. How's the Great. fucking in this game? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't I can't believe tell you. it. I- a day doesn't the pass. I don't... Six out of ten. <laughs> a day does not pass when I don't walk into GameStop and ask that very same question to the clerk. Just straight in. <laughs> you see, you see Madden Two K Eighteen here. What's the fucking like in this game? <laughs> <laughs> He's straight away. <laughs> yeah. Well, He's speaking sorry. of uh, getting getting fucked here, let's talk about <laughs> I- let's talk about Iron Banner a little more. Um, I forgot. How, okay, so I'm obviously still after armor. How's everybody else's loot drop experience been? And how do you guys like this compared to maybe the old Iron Banner? Uh, I didn't really get much into the old Iron Banner. And the loot drop here has just been average to me. I haven't really gotten anything like super amazing yet. I think I may have gotten one exotic the whole time I played, uh, you know, playing Iron Banner here in Destiny 2. But, you know, you get the Iron Banner themed uh, armor and weapons. And so far, it hasn't really been stuff that I've been wanting to use. So as of, as of this moment, I haven't been super excited, to be totally honest. I just like the mode. Uh, for me, the, the loot itself is beautiful. The rate at which you earn it is pretty good. I would, I would say uh, fine. Uh, the way you earn it, though, I don't like it as much as I used to like. I feel like they had kind of gotten it right with Iron Banner in The Rise of Iron, uh, Destiny's final DLC, where you... Uh, you basically earn tokens toward earning rep with your with FRD, Iron Banner rep- representative at the time. And uh, you can earn packages. The packages could have any piece of Iron Banner gear in them. Really exciting. The packages were the best because they could have anything. Then you also got drops at the end of the match that could have a small selection of, of gear in it. So, for instance, one week it might be they're giving away the hand cannon and the sniper rifle and boots and helmets, right? So that's all that could drop at the end of the match. Then if you didn't get the drop that you wanted, you could go to Lady Efforty and buy them. I thought that was a really elegant system because you might get lucky through the Engrams if you ranked up, um, but you really were only going to get two pieces of armor, two, two guns, and then it cut. Make you come back the next month to try and complete that set of armor. And I like that system. So from my part in it, um, I've kind of observed both of the the events. So I looked at factions and I looked at banner. And the common complaint there is that people are finding it difficult difficult to complete their armor sets. And Destiny 2 to me isn't a game that I feel like um, they've, they've set up to be something that you're chasing the same armor set month on month on month. To me, it's something that you drop in when the event's happening. You get the thing that you want and then you step out and you enjoy playing with it and you have that cosmetic factor. So it got me thinking in my head, how could they fix it? And I'm not particularly um, averse to the token system they got. I think the token system's pretty, pretty good. You know, it works, it's functional, there's, there's flaws definitely, but I think to, to supplement that and to add an insurance policy for people that do want to grind it like yourself and like, like you BC and want to have all the gear, there's a currency that we currently have a surplus amount of that's meant to be there to buy timed items and that's legendary shards. So every time Zer comes in, you've got legendary shards to buy your things. Why couldn't there be the vendor, so Shaq, uh, not Shaq, sorry, Saladin and the faction representatives that obviously have their existing token systems, but then also have like you say, Briar, three or four or five pieces of items, armor, weapons, whatever, that you can use your timed exclusive currency, your legendary shards to purchase, because that covers both bases then. And I think that would be a, a really smart way to, to give the people that want to grind and put time in a chance to get a bit more out of the, the event. What are you guys' thoughts on that? <clears throat> I think that's awesome, man. You took the words right out of my mouth, actually. There's a surplus of legendary shards if I hadn't gone through and like spent some out of my collections to get weapon parts so that I could get the last few weapons that I needed from the gunsmith, I'd have over 3,000. Like, not even kidding. Damn. And, you know, we have, which seems excessive, but I want something to do with them. <clears throat> even if it's just like buy bullshit cosmetics, ornaments for the armor, whatever it is. But, like, my overall experience, like besides loot, like obviously I'm still chasing armor and stuff like that. But yeah, I thought it would have been a great opportunity to maybe have the weapon. Like I like the the coin system, but that shouldn't be your primary way of getting loot, in my like opinion. Like an auxiliary. 
Exactly. It should be an auxiliary way of you potentially getting what you want out of things. And it, you know, should be completely random like it is, but it shouldn't be the main way of getting loot. Totally agree. Um, connections have been pretty decent, but I think that's a player population thing. Um, other than <clears throat> the Iron Banner itself, what I was kind of disappointed in was that like there really wasn't a whole lot of lore tied to it. None of these weapons have any lore tabs on them. Um, none of them. Saladin doesn't even like basically recognize us. It even says in his description that he's the last Iron Lord, and it's like, no, you're one of the last OG Iron Lords. You know what I mean? Like we're Iron Lords as well. And like I thought it was kind of weird that he didn't recognize us, but at the beginning of the opening mission, Shaq says, oh, Saladin's young wolf, you know? And by the way, that got me pretty excited when he calls you young wolf. That gets me, that gets me going. But uh, I just kind of felt like it was just like, okay, here's the Iron Banner. We expect you to know what it is. We expect you to know what it's about. Oh, yeah, by the way, this went into production before Rise of Iron or Taken King, before they really, or uh, before um, Rise of Iron. So they really never fleshed out his story. I mean, there's a good chance that they just developed Saladin before, you know, Rise of Iron. Rise of Iron wasn't really even technically supposed to happen, was it? It was just kind of a... Yeah. So, you know, there, there's signs of that. And, like, don't get me wrong, I'm hopeful. Like, I, I'm not trying to shit on Iron Banner because it's been awesome. I've had a great time with my friends going in there. That's the thing, um, though, is, like, actually playing it, it has been a lot of fun. I think partially just be control and everybody... Everybody yep. seems to think more of control than most of their uh, game modes. Quick play. Uh, it's, it's a way for us to just like control. control for the week and have a good time and control. Mm -hmm. like that. I agree. It's been fun, man, running around with the uh, the Quick Fang sword. I've been so addicted, man. You just third person around a wall and dodge out, Surprise, go invisible. Yeah, dodge yeah. out, go invisible. You got three guys trying to shoot you, but they have no aim assist. So to be honest, I've got, I've got my own mini event going on as well, and you guys probably know it. Like for me, I know Iron Banner's going on, and people want that armor and gear. I'm all about the blues. Like I've got my new quest. Um, the blues are like the new hipster gear. So the Sand Wasp Auto. Sand Wasp is like baller. It's like a, a high caliber blue auto that's just absolutely wrecking people. There's a ton of good hand cannons that are all blues that are difficult to get hold of, and some of the blue armor sets as well look fantastic, and the stats on it. A, a equivalent to the stats you're getting on the legendaries so for me if you want to have a really unique guardian and customize it then have some fun chasing some blue armor sets down and that can be your own mini event it sounds cheesy but i'm having a great time using it and Blues you know it triggers up to people. 300 light level oh yeah them anywhere you want yeah and you can put a mod on them so if it drops at 300 you can mod it up to 305 um there's no no difference there and i i personally do it because you know that when you kill someone in the crucible they get triggered by the kill feed and they see it was like some crappy gun that they yeah. dismantled when they were like 20 <laughs> what's it called so, the sandstorm darude sand sand wasp sand uh, wasp. Did, did, did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let me tell you about this it. auto rifle mate you probably never heard of it the ultimate hipster opening line you probably never heard of it <laughs> exactly man exactly <laughs> no i've been chasing down the cuboid the sand wasp all of those things i'm i'm hoping that you know some other people do the same because it's good fun and it's it's a lot of content there that people are missing out on so we know that at TwitchCon, they're going to be talking about seasons and things like that coming up yeah. here within the next week. Um, and I do believe that they referred to it as this season's Iron Banner. So do you think, <clears throat> get a little speculation going here, what do you guys think that these seasons mean? Do you think it could potentially mean that maybe one season weapons have rolls on them and then it randomizes for the next season? Or... What do you guys think that could? What do you think seasons potentially mean? I, I have no idea at this point. I mean, it could be. It could definitely be that that weapons and armor they keep the same sign, but the the roles are different, which would be interesting. It would give you at least a, a you know, maybe maybe take a look at the guns that you haven't been paying attention to at all because, um, I I highly doubt that it's a brand new set of weapons and armor. I think that's too much work. Like, yeah. we're expected DLC in December, so if the came out this month, we'd expect two or three between DLCs. To have a full new set of armor and weapons times between DLCs, I think is unrealistic. Could um, seasons be from DLC to DLC? 
I so think, maybe, maybe there's not a set time limit on them. So maybe it's just literally like this season and then the DLC comes in and then it's next I think season. There's going to be multiple seasons for DLC just based on when the Twitch, Twitch announcement is. I think they're going to. Maybe it's not going to happen while they're talking, but. I mean, my gut feel on it and from everything I've seen on Destiny 2 um, and the uh, the accessibility and with accessibility being the first and foremost word, I don't think they're going to gate people out by taking away weapons that people may not have had the chance to get yet um, and saying, well, you can't get that now that the role's changed. I feel like the clan system that we've got at the moment is probably a good beta for them or like precursor to what season's going to look like more often. So if I had to put my money on it, it would be all activities in the game will have an overarching progression that you can work towards, be it individually or be it as a, as a group of people. So like Crucible, for example, will have five ranks that you can work towards each week, you know, like co contribute 10,000 experience or whatever towards so that over the course of the season, you can earn unique rewards if you play a lot of Crucible or if you do a lot of strikes or if you do a lot of the raid. So, you know, you have that overarching thing because that's what clan rewards are really. The clan season isn't that you can beat other clans. It's not ranked. It just means that if your clan is active, you can get, you know, a certain amount on. That's what I see it as. I don't know. That's, I think, the most likely candidate. I'm thinking it might drop when PC comes out. It might be a good time to reset the season. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they might surprise me. It might be something fantastic, but I feel like it's going to be something that's super accessible for a person that plays 10 hours a week. It's kind of where I think we should be pitching it at. I said PC. I saw Gary per <coughs> Gary perk up a bit. He was... I heard my sure calling. It's like the back, back signal. The back <clears throat> signal went off. That was it. <laughs> We're close, Gary. Don't worry, all right? It'll... PC release will be here soon. You guys are got, what, 11 days left until it drops? Not even, I don't think. Is no. it? 24th Nine. is when it comes 24th? out. Yeah. Oh, Nine days. 23rd for the United States. In a day yeah. early, early access. America. Early uh, access. America, if you're, baby. If you're in Australia, you've now got a one and a half day delay. Have you seen that shit? That must burn. <laughs> didn't didn't they, they, <laughs> they it? Yeah, because they had early access, obviously, to the first yeah. game. And now they've globally synchronized it to, to Greenwich Meridian time at GMT. Mm. So Oz is like 18 hours ahead of that, whatever the shit they are. I don't know, like some sort of crazy thing. They've lost like a day. Yeah. Bummer. So uh, I guess... Next topic? Like, yeah, I was going to say, did you want to transition onto that? Because our next topic was actually one that I picked out from, uh, you know, friend of the show and fellow YouTube victim, um, Super Dan, um, runs a couple of YouTube channels that predominantly focus on Destiny. So I know he's heavily invested in Destiny as, as a brand and, and obviously a fan of the game. Um, he asked, uh, he picked up on a, a tweet that Christopher Barrett put out, um, quite lighthearted as well. I know a lot of people jumped on him about it, but Chris uh, Barrett asked what we'd like to see from the first Destiny DLC. So I'd like to throw that question out to our hosts. Um, BC, I'm going to pass over to you first because I know you've got a lot to say on it, but for the rest of us, I'd like us to hone in on just one part of it rather than trying to plan a whole DLC each. If we could just think in our heads about the one thing that we each want the most uh, from a DLC and then justify, I guess, why we think that's the thing that we're most passionate about getting. But go for it, basically. Tell us what, uh, okay. what's in your head. Well, I'll definitely hone in on one after I get done. But I sat here after I've read our topics and I, I was really thinking about what I would like to see and what would be awesome to me because we know what we're used to when, when it comes to DLC and what Bungie normally releases. So we kind of got an idea of what it's going to be, but what it, what it's about to me is really the deciding factor on how awesome it could be. And so I came up with something called, that I call Supreme Vanguard Era DLC. And uh, the Vanguard Era is an earlier time when the Cabal, Vex, and Guardians were fighting their way across the galaxy. Brutality existed across the universe as hatred boiled in the Cabal, and the Vex simply wanted to expand their reach across the galaxy. All that stood, this is the story, and this is pretty much what it's going to be. All that stood in the way of these beings imposing their will were imposing their will were three young guardians, rookies with a determined will to save their people. These guardians are now known as the Vanguard, Zavala, Ikora, and Cage Six. In this DLC, you will see the pain, struggles, and triumphs that this fire team faced in the past and what they did to save their people and their world. So it's a, a prequel DLC that is actually going to be told to you in the DLC from your character's point of view. You're going to approach your Vanguard, whoever that may be, 
if you're a hunter, titan, or a uh, warlock, and they'll proceed to tell you the story. And as they tell you, you actually go back in the past and play through with them. So in this era, you're going to get Va uh, Vanguard era nightfall. You lose all your loot? You got to start no, from scratch? No, no, no. Let, let me finish. You get Vanguard <laughs> era. You definitely don't. Vanguard era nightfall will be included. You're going to get three strikes from the Supreme Vanguard era. Uh, so it'll be like back in the day. One, ra one raid from the Vanguard era. And the way this thing will work, it's going to be a three-arc story DLC. So each part's about an hour long. Depending on the character class you're playing, you talk to your corresponding Vanguard. They'll tell you a story of a great battle of their past, and you'll be seamlessly transported to that time and place while playing as a younger version of that Vanguard. Uh, the battle mission will give much more depth to the character lore, and upon finishing it, you will be given a gift from your Vanguard, a weapon or a piece of armor obtained during the Van Vanguard era mission. Uh, and you can achieve certain goals during the mission in order to get exotics and things like that from your Vanguard. And you can play all three. So that would be an awesome DLC. You could play as Cade, you could play as Zavala or Ikora with all three of your characters. You play through the game, you get the loot, and they give you something awesome depending on how well you do. And, of course, you get the nightfalls, you get the strikes and everything that you normally get. But to everybody would like to see these characters. So you you'd never play as your Guardian. You only play as Ikora, Cade, or Zavala? Yeah. But when you come... Scratch. No, you, you start from whatever pre you know predetermined point. Maybe they're the, the level you are. Who knows? Uh, but this is just an idea. And however they would implement it, I think it would be awesome because we get so much more from these characters. Everybody says they'd like to see these characters actually in the game. Imagine being able, being able to play with them for a little while. And then when you come out of this, this mode, you have the loot. You have the experience. And then you get something awesome from them as they, I guess, in their mind, told you this story that you got to experience in this way. I thought it was pretty cool. And if anything, I would just like to see more of the story DLC. I want us to know more about these characters. And rather than, you know, going to a website and read about what they've done, I'd like to see them in action more. We got a, a quick glimpse of that at the beginning of Destiny 2. That was really the first time we saw them ever be badasses, and it was awesome to see. The last time. <laughs> so, like, you've got some really great ideas. I wouldn't necessarily want that to be the main focus of my DLC. Maybe mm -hmm. that's like a little little chunk, like a third of it. Maybe yeah. I'm too greedy. No, I'm with I'm ahead. with Briar. I want to play as my guardian for a little bit, but I think that would be an awesome way for them to play off um, a Cora Ray's meditation section oh, or yeah. whatever. Maybe maybe that could be like a a bonus to the DLC or something where you go into the meditations because there is some really good, rich story about Cade Zavala, I mean, you know, Zavala, the natural born leader, Cade, the roguish commander, you know, who may have only been the only person alive to see the collapse, you know what I mean? Like, and then, you know, you got Ikora Ray kicking Shax's ass because they've They've touched bases on it before where they said Shax hasn't sat down right since since he went up against Akora <laughs> in the Crucible. That crazy to see. Dude, Akora's a bad bitch, dude. Um, <laughs> yeah, dude. Stormcaller shotgun, don't don't even ape at her. All right. She will <laughs> out ape you. But like, um, so you know, I really think that that's an awesome idea, dude. That's really cool. Maybe you could like that way you could take in your weapons or whatever, but people still, as much as we don't have a connection with our Guardian, our Guardian doesn't speak, blah, 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 I still kind of would feel connected with my Guardian, and I'd want to take him through the next chapter, so to speak. Gotcha. Like, But I think it's a really good idea, dude, and I think they could implement that really well with Ikora's um, meditations. So. Or, I mean, if, if they did implement it through the meditation, maybe during this meditation it's actually you reliving what these characters right. went through, and it's actually your character. And you see what happened. Maybe you're playing as Ikora, but you're talking to Cade and talking to Zavala, and you're hearing what she heard way back then. So you actually get to relive it. I mean, to me, it's many ways they can implement it, but that was just you know off the cuff what I thought about. I thought it would be really cool. Guys, yeah. what are your thoughts? That's and I appreciate it too, Wilson. Yeah. Gary, uh, you got okay, go ahead. So um I'm a PvP player through and through. Um I don't have personally I have no aspirations in PvE whatsoever. However, I'm going to park that aside and notice that a majority of players are, and I think PvP players are in the minority in Destiny, and that people want PvE content, and that's what people come back for, and people enjoy their strikes, and people like that. So for me, I feel like we need a meaningful PvE activity, which is something you can repeat um, into infinity, effectively, something that is um, as shallow as you want it to be or as deep as you want it to be, and a reason to do that. So for me, I feel it's the inclusion of um, 
armor sets and when i say armor sets i'm talking diablo and world of warcraft style armor sets that are unique to certain activities and playlists um so that's one thing there i guess like loot that you you have to chase and work towards getting pieces of and if you've not got a lot of time to spend on it then that's fine you know you can just work on that one piece slowly and i think that the way that you could make that not overpowered i guess is that 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 stuff just makes you more effective at doing that certain activity so if you're doing strike set you, you know you can get a strike set that maybe gives you more resistance against bosses or more more damage towards strike enemies you know that sort of thing so you put on your strike gear and you're a good strike player because that's what you enjoy doing so that would be the the one component of pve that i'd like and then i guess if i can have a cheeky second it's scalable pve activity uh, and i'm going to go to diablo again and world of warcraft for example and look at what they did with challenge modes and greater rifts um, because I think that they're a really, really good example of something that satisfies the hardcore and the um, the time limited player. So you can say, I want to do a light level 200 rift, and this will be like a procedurally generated level. So it can be, um, you know, like like going into a lost sector, but like an extended lost sector where you're just fighting yeah. through a cave network that's got, you know, s some certain features, whatever. You're just pushing through that, and you've got light level 200, so you know what it's going to be. You can push through it and you get a boss at the end you get your loot and, and all done you might actually say i want to do a light level 321 or 351 because i really want to challenge myself and push myself through and obviously you get loot accordingly with that and the way that i feel that would work is that there should almost be like light level 400 cap on it so it's something that can never be achieved and the gear that you get is only relevant in the challenge modes and the rift modes you put on your rift gear um, and the light levels that you get above are like, you know, I don't know, rift levels or whatever you want to call it. So it keeps allowing you to progress so you can work towards that 400 set um, of that. Or you can just be happy to do it at 280, 300 light, get your gear at that and then move on because you actually just, you don't care about pushing through. You just want to be able to do the raid and strikes. Uh, and that to me is something that I could repeat and progress and get better at that doesn't exclude the time limited players. I think that's absolutely key. So that would be mine. So you're yeah, like, you're awesome. kind of... You're kind of like wanting something similar to to bring up a Cora Ray's meditations again. You know how you can only get that starting gear like the, when you first start a Destiny Two up that armor that you're wearing on Hunter Warlock and Titan. You can only get that through Cora's meditations. But we, you're right. We need more of that, which is like kind of brings me into my point. Briar, hope we're not on. If we are on the same thought here, we can go ahead and joint this one. But um. I want to see more end game <clears throat> customization, more to kind of add on to what Gary was saying. I want to see something done more with the mod system. Um, I would like them to maybe slowly introduce like actual perk mods or something. Like, I think Briar, you had said it best, man. You want to see stuff start low and then get kind of buffed versus what we saw in D1. Everything was so massively overpowered that they had no choice but to nerf it, whereas they can kind of start, okay, we've, we're testing out this mod system. It's not what people want. It's kind of a gimmick. Let's introduce some more stuff to the mods. So, like, maybe, you know, something that affects your range, maybe something that, um, well, they already have kinetic counterbalance, maybe something for overall stability, because counterbalance isn't stability. It just makes your recoil more vertical. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, I know what we're getting with our next DLC. At least we've gotten like some information from some dependable, you know, sources on the internet that have kind of given us an insight. And um, I just want to see more in-game stuff, man. I want more customization. Like Gary said, I want more gear sets to chase. I want strike-specific weapons, or I want a clear path towards loot. I don't want public events to be the end-all. You know, the end all activity to do everything. You know, I want I want to get in there and dip into strikes. I want to do more nightfalls. You know, I'm primarily a PvP player at this point because I've exhausted all the PvE activity minus like the raid every week. Like I could probably get in there more, but I just need more end game stuff. Like I think Briar had even said it before, like <clears throat> give us goals like a thousand headshots unlocks a skin for you know, even a legendary it doesn't have to be exotic. And then maybe 2,000 kills, we get a certain skin for hand cannons, you know, like just anything. Like, it'd be great. The goals would be. I think it's Destiny 2. Me, if I had to choose one thing to add to Destiny 2, 
upcoming deal. No doubt it's going to be. I missed the fuck out of Rumble. I love <laughs> Rumble. I love going in and and just every man for itself. To me, it is the lowest stress way to play PV. Go in there. You don't have any teammates to rely on. You didn't have any coordination to work out. You don't have shit to do with nobody except shoot fans in the face. <laughs> <Rumble. laughs> and, and I miss it dearly. <laughs> I, yeah. I feel like that's definitely got got to come back at some point, though, Briar. I mean, everybody loves that single player, that single man uh, PvP mode, and uh, I think at some point they have to reintroduce it. I hope they. Do. I, 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 really I just do. I feel like they, they can't. At what at what point do they realize that they'd have no choice? You know, it's just a yeah, multiplayer. So it's a multiplayer you look mode. At the state of destiny during Rise of Iron. Or- State of Destiny right now. So much missing. That you know the players just like I want Rumble to come back. There's they want they want uh uh custom matches to come back or private matches yep. to come back. That was gonna be my thing was if because uh, I always I have to kinda add on to what everyone's saying here. So yeah, I would say bring back Rumble with custom matches, not private matches, yeah. fully customizable. I wanna be able to Dude, I want to go old school, man, in the just like gravity. Remember, you could do that in something like the old Halo <laughs> games. You could make yeah. gravity off the fucking charts, like just change, real sneak. You could change players' health so every gun was a that kill. Yeah, or the, the possible guns that were. Yep, yeah, only the yeah. guns. Rockets yeah. only. You could make one guy super powerful and put him up against four people. You know what I mean? Like, and just really fun stuff like that. Some of the most amazing game modes have come from like fully customized private games so like um do you guys remember like zombie mode in halo or infected i think it was called one person had the sword they were really fast and invisible and if they sorted someone that person became fast and invisible and it was dude around halloween time it was like that's what you were playing on halo 3 dude you were playing infection on some of the craziest maps like and just some of the most great like that's like a true beer in pizza game mode Oh, as yeah. much as I'd like to think, man, where you're eating pizza, drink, you know, and you're trying to play because you don't really care what happens. It's all in good fun, you know? Yeah. And I'd, I'd definitely like to see more of that. We could have some <clears throat> really interesting stuff, a lot of uh, machinima and uh, montage videos and stuff, like just little things that you can do, but go into private matches real quick to get like a really cool transition to your next, you know, dope play or whatever. Like, it'd be really cool to get custom matches, man. Be. So, Wilson, you alluded to the fact that we, we do know at least part of what's coming out in this future DLC. How do you think Bungie did with their first plans to release it? Do you, do you think it's going to be worthwhile? Do you, are you excited about what they're releasing? Yeah, man, I'm really excited because I, it's it's Osiris-themed, and I have... Dude, Osiris is dope, and that's not just, like, the Trials player in me, man. Like, he... Like, going back to the lore, like, the speaker had, like two people that he basically considered sons, and that was Osiris and Saint-14. And Osiris kind of became too smart, and it, like, worried the speaker, basically, and he, like, outlawed him. Like, they would do this thing, um, I forget what it's called, something, something Oddix, where warlocks, like, basically kill themselves to study the effects of the afterlife. That's like how they discovered self res in Destiny 1. Wow. They would, like, they would purposely crazy. put themselves in danger to die so that there's all these different things that you can learn from death that normal people don't get to learn because they don't get resurrected by their ghosts all the time. So like it became like an information thing. And like he dabbled in that and the Vex network and all this stuff. And the speaker said, no dude, like he was supposed to be the next speaker basically. Like he was, he was grooming him for command, so to speak. And he banished him and sent state 14 after him. And no one's ever seen either of them since, but there's been a few things in Destiny 2 that Osiris has been brought up in, and I'm actually really excited about it because I think his lore is like super deep, and I'm hoping you think we'll see that, him. I hope they use that as an excuse to tweak Trials a little bit. Now that Osiris is like, "What is this Trials?" and then I'm bullshit. You're doing it all wrong. You're doing it all wrong. It's three v three. When you're down, you're down. Like I, whatever. Like. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I appreciate the the history, man. I had no idea that ever happened. I never really read up on Destiny One, but just hearing that, damn, makes me want to go, 
get on Google, the Google, and find out what the hell happened because that's really interesting lore. Wow. So it's much, it's much like um, Toll in the Shattered with he's like in the Vex or not Vex Network, the Hive Nether Realm. He's traveling in energy form, you know what I mean? And he's made himself known. It's the same thing with Osiris, but in the Vex network. So he's kind of like, he's in time somewhere. Like, so it's some really deep shit, man. It's it's wow. pretty good. Super cool. Huh? Well, what do we got next up for our topics, guys? It's going to be you, brother, with what video game genre could you live without? So do you want to tee us up for that one? I think it's a good one. Yeah, well... I was thinking about this because, you know, I like mostly all genres, barring very few. And I was thinking if something were to happen and all of a sudden one of them had to go and you'll never see another game, all the games in that genre just disappeared, what would I choose? And so I came up with a list. And you guys let us know in the comments too here on Twitch and on YouTube, what video game genre could you live without? And here's a list I came up with. Of course, there's more, but these are the mains. Action, adventure, shooters, first-person shooters, stealth, survival, rhythm, rhythm. Uh, survival horror, fighting games, beat 'em ups, Metroidvania, real time 3D adventures, role playing games, MMORPGs, fi- fantasy, I was about to say Final Fantasy, horror, racing simulators, and turn based shooters. So it's really interesting. Now, for me, it's uh, kind of like, I guess it would be. Like Pixel Junk Month? No, not per- turn-based shooters. Turn-based shooters. I actually know of one. Doom hit RPG. Me, me. Uh, Doom RPG on the mobile phone. You can only oh, move nice. one square per time. Shoot once, then the enemy gets its chance to move and then come up and attack you. What's the other one that came out recently? Yeah. <clears throat> RTS. Yeah. XCOM, yeah. That was yeah. that was gonna be my answer. Was I'm not a fan of sports games. Unless we're talking old school Nintendo, like some sports simulator 2000, oh, yeah, 3000. So. Yeah, NBA Jam, any of that oh, good stuff. Oh, oh. I haven't thought about that game in a long time. Yeah, right? He's on fire. But um, they, uh, <laughs> the um, real time strategy games, man, I can't get into. I just, I can't. My brain doesn't work that way, man. I feel like there's a lot of math involved, a lot of calculating. And I'm more of a, you know, jump in there and figure out if I'm going to make this work or not and mm-hmm. then get the fuck out. And that's not really my kind of game. So I could, I don't know what it is, man. There's some really cool ones like Halo Wars looks dope as shit. Yeah. Just can't I just play can't it. do it. I can't do it. I can't play either. it. And I fucking you love know, the Halo universe. Like I love them. Uh, yeah. Really? Back to, uh, I never played the first Warcraft, but Warcraft 2, I put countless hours into that. Um, playing online, I didn't. I think, I don't think you could play online. I think what you had to do was actually directly dial your friend uh, to play a match, like a two-player match. But it was so much fun, you know, getting dragons, deciding is he gonna get dragons and I'm gonna get archer. Am I gonna fake like do a dragon attack early, then never build a dragon again? And he'd build a shit ton of archers, then I'd swarm them with a bunch of ogres. You know, like that kind of stuff was so fun. RTS games, I understand there's different stories for different folks, so I'm not, I'm definitely not hating. Uh, totally. But I totally, I totally love RTS games. Even the StarCraft 2. Halo Wars, I didn't like just. Mm. Mm, that's the Gary in you speaking. I was going to, I was going to actually <laughs> apologize to you, Wilson, for saying this and, until I realized it was Justin who actually said he liked this, this game. I do not ever need to, for the rest of my life, play any racing simulators. I've mm. never gotten into them. Really? Sorry, really? Justin. Yeah, I, any of them. It doesn't really matter what it is, PlayStation, Xbox, PC, anything. Uh, I've just never really gotten into them. I've never been excited by them. They've always felt Probably just... Van. Yes, I do. <laughs> Explain. Too many it. kids for a fucking car, right? <laughs> there, there's a uh, there's like a racing simulator game that like actual racers use, and I can't. I, I feel dumb for even bringing it up because I can't remember the name I of it. I know what you're my, talking about. It's like iReal. I race or I, I race, yeah, yeah I race like yeah, yeah. totally. My buddy straight built, and of course, this is my buddy with all the arcades, um, because he's like the smartest person in the world. He built like an actual like cockpit racer and bought like this really expensive steering wheel and like foot pedal and had like this monitor set up and he would Three stream monitors. it. Yeah, he'd have the monitors and he'd even have like the helmet and he'd stream it and he'd all be in there like, and it was, it was really helmet. cool. 
Yeah, he'd put the helmet on. He'd have the gloves on and stuff. Like he'd all go sit down. He'd be like, "How's everyone doing?" He'd be put his gloves awesome. on, put, put the helmet, and he'd all be like, like leaning into the turns and stuff. And like that stuff, I could totally get into. I like racing games if I'm at like an arcade or something. If okay, I can that, immerse, if I can immerse yeah. myself like in the cockpit, it doesn't have to be a racing game. It could be like a, a Star Wars like space shooter or something. You know, Pod Grand, Racer. Gran Turismo no. One, Gran Turismo Two were like out. Uh, Life impacting games for me. I bought them. I bought them, bro. Booze in USA was Booze in USA was oh, amazing. Oh, <laughs> Booze in USA was the only but, time but, we could but, drink but and drive. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I absolutely love Cruise in USA. Uh, Namco's, well, I'm trying to remember uh, Ridge Racer. talking more about like the Sims. The Sims, I just can't do. But like Ridge gotcha. Racer, Cruising, I actually enjoy those. I love like Mario Kart and, you know, Pod Racers, uh, Wipeout, those type of games I got into. But I don't know if the real realism of sim- simulators have taken me out, taken the fun factor away from it for me, because you, everything has to be so on point and real that it, you feel like you're actually driving a real car. And to me, that's not fun. I do it every day. I, yeah, I, you I don't like do it at 12 hours. hours. Yeah, yeah. Do you drive fast, Beastly? Are you a little pedal to the metal? You know, metal to the Only metal? when I'm alone. Only when I'm alone. See, I, I, I can't know. drive fast. I've never, I, dude, since I have gotten my license, I was 16 years old. I have drove my car like a fucking 90 year old. Uh, Expressway, First of all, what speed you, do you drive, Wilson? Well, you can't afford getting pulled over looking like this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they, uh, this guy's got his hat. Where's the drugs? Where is that, why is that bear smoking a joint on your shirt? Get out of the car, man. Um, you know, so it, I've just never been one for driving fast. So I can kind of relate, man, because I get really nervous when, like, they just bump the speed limit. That's people are. <laughs> They just bumped the speed limit up to 70 miles an hour on the interstate here, and I can't do it, man. I've drove 65 for years, and I go five more miles an hour, and I'm like, oh. terrifying. Like leaning back, like, well, yeah. oh, man. Here, here when I got Georgia. my motorcycle, when I got my current motorcycle, <laughs> the speedometer maxes out at 180 degrees, 180 miles per hour, and I'm like, it really hit that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that. I did it. I did it, man. I better hope Mrs. Rabbit's not listening. What's the, what's the fastest like, you've gone, right? Okay, yeah, fair enough. Okay. What's the fastest you've ever gone on your motorcycle? I, I pegged that I pegged that 180 mile an hour speedometer out. You fastest you I've can't ever. be serious. Yeah. Oh my god, have you ever watched YouTube? Don't do that shit. I'd get I'd get I'd be shaking. Oh my, oh my god. god. It, was, shaking, it was pretty dude. fucking scary, but it was it was really My nerves are too bad. And, and I'm with you, Wilson. I mean I down here at the speed limit. Uh, on 75 is 65 miles per hour and everybody routine this is georgia so everybody's in a highway to hell they're speeding so you got to do 75 just so people don't kill you but uh yeah anything above 75 i feel like i'm gonna you know have a heart attack and die so especially with five kids i gotta drive like i have five miss daisies and a wife yeah so i definitely yeah. drive slow when, when my family's with me so Gary, so on the other hand, strikes me as like a oh, little yeah. speed racer. Easter. Yeah, I could see him like before he leaves every day, he <laughs> on the tires. Later, babe. Pulls out, Later, babe. pulls up, pulls up, races everyone at every stoplight. Looks I, over. Uh, you know look, look, I, look at you. Rev, rev that engine, Gary. There's yeah. a little bonus present for you guys in our private chat, uh, which is a moral of the story why you shouldn't drive fast. Um, so you guys can check that picture out later. But um, on the topic of games... <laughs> I couldn't get rid of um, sports games because I used to love a game called Super Baseball 2020 on the Super Nintendo, which was like robot baseball, which I've got no interest in baseball whatsoever or games of that nature, but absolutely hooked me. So I can't get rid of sports games for that for that matter, just for that one game. But for me, I'm going to trigger BC over there and say horror games. I could do without any horror games, could kill the genre tomorrow, wouldn't bother me. Every horror game could go survival horror, standard horror, all horror. Just get rid of it. Good, I man. would agree with you, Gary, except there's there's like just one in a hundred diamonds in a rough in that genre. Like Resident Evil Resident Evil 7 that just came out that are absolute phenomenal games. Resident Evil 2. Part, I agree. Alien Resident Isolation. Deep, uh, dead Space. Dude, Come Dead on. Space. Oh, can we talk about Dead Space for a second? Fatal Frame. <laughs> that Come game. On. Okay, so in my opinion, Dead Space did an amazing job of and taking the, the third-person shooter genre and mixing it with horror. And like, yeah, there were a few jump scares in there, but like, you know, and like, yeah, people think those are cheap scares, which like I get, but 
overall, man, like that game gave me the feeling of like you are alone. Mm -hmm. You are not in fucking Kansas anymore. You're on some fucking planet and you feel alone, basically. And then on top of it, you're trying to find your girl, like, which is like motive. <clears throat> you know what I mean? That I, I could relate to. Like, if I landed on that fucked up planet, my first thought would be to turn that ship around. But if I knew my girl was there, I would go snooping around a bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, I don't know. I thought it, I thought it was brilliant. I thought the motive was there. I feel like that's what a lot of horror games lack is motive. In my opinion, I mean, but. games like Silent Hill 2, you know, and even newer stuff like Outlast uh, have just been received phenomenally by fans and critics. And uh, for me, older games like Silent Hill, the original Resident Evil 1, those games, they, they're just so meaningful. They, Especially Resident Evil, they started off the genre of survival horror with that game. And uh, I, I know how you feel, Gary, that these games are terrifying and, you know, you have to put your head under your wife's arm when you, you get ready to play them, but... Thank God you're not controlling who gets to play what down here, my friend. Because for we me, need our horror game. Huh? For me, it's just not a. It's not a. Uh, it's not a feeling that I'd prefer to have. Right? If I'm like, if I'm looking through all the movies and I got one that's gonna make me feel like super happy because it's comedy, and another one's gonna make me badass, you know, because it's an action movie. <laughs> I got one that's gonna make me feel fucking it's terrified. Be... You is, don't you know? like that. You don't like that. It's scene. the best feeling ever. Okay, no, so I no, used to be, I, I used to be like a leap before I look kind of guy. You know what I mean? I'd climb that tree, I'd climb that wall, I'd jump off it. Now yeah. I like kind of stop to think, you know, hey, if I fall and break a finger, I'm out of work. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't even work. Like so, nowadays I look for those kind of thrills elsewhere. You know what I mean? Something to kind of get the the heart. I love getting scared, dude. Yeah. Like that is a good feeling, man. Like yeah. that's that's called alive. Like when yeah. that adrenaline pumps in, that's that's your fight I or really flight. I really like laughing though, and that makes me that's feel true. alive. No, that does. You have to balance them, <laughs> young <laughs> Padawan. I don't really need I guess. that. Like, <laughs> I'm terrified shit in my pants. That side nah. of the balance, I can. I feel like I can. Did you? Did you got look well, Inner Black Ninja in the comment section? Uh, and we love Inner Black here at Revolver. Wanted me to bring up um, Dying Light, which was a phenomenal game. Came out, I believe, late 2015. Did right. you guys play that game? And and did you enjoy it at all? I thought it was I, awesome. I actually am planning on playing Dying Light 2 uh, right around Halloween. According to Twitch, Briar plays it all the time, even when he's not playing it. That's true. <laughs> I mean, for me, you guys say you get that feeling of like adrenaline rush and like enjoyment and excitement when you're going to put down a, a horror. For me, if I just know I've got a weekend where like the wife and kid are away and I've got nothing to do, and I've got a load of, like, junk food to eat, and you put an MMO in front of me and say I've got, like, 40 hours to play it, that's that same feeling of exhilaration and excitement, just looking at that 40-hour stretch and just thinking, heaven, done, oh, I don't have to leave. Maybe, see, maybe it's just like the... a driving game, going around a corner and nailing that corner. Hmm. Let, see, let, me, let me take this for a second, Wilson. I think I know where you're coming from, and I'll try to put it in the words that these guys can digest. Um... Horror games, and to me, I feel just like you, Wilson. To me, it's a, it's a very important experience to have. And the reason I think it's, it's a well-deserved genre, and, and it should stick around, is because that's not something you can get out of your everyday interactions. You don't go to work and get afraid. You don't drive home and, and are afraid. But you can go to work and laugh at jokes. You can go to work and get excited. You can go to work and hear people argue and think about fighting, right? That's stuff that happens around you all you the time. You have not seen my wife angry, my friend. <laughs> I was gonna say sometimes I drive home. There afraid. is it's terror like... in this house. <laughs> also, Ryan, what the that's... fuck sort of pharmacist do you work at to have a first-person shooter relevant at work? That's fucking crazy, man. I think we should be alerting some sort of authorities. That's the next shooter happening right there. What did you say? Who had a first-person shooter at work? Yeah, you said that these all the rest of these things apart from horror you can experience at work. I'm thinking first-person shooters. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the feelings you guys are are talking about having. The exhilaration of seeing something funny. You know, the excitement of certain types of games. At first-person shooters, maybe now in America more so than before. That's but what I'm saying, man. What, what, I'm, what I'm saying is that feeling of horror is something that you never really experience unless you're in, like, dire straits in a life, uh, you know, life or death type of situation, which rarely happens. And so well, you can go home and play a game that, that triggers a feeling you never have, knowing that you're not in any real danger, that fear that fear becomes fun. So you know, what and, and, it is for me, Beastly, is that like the not the actual jump scare that it gets me. It's the thirty minutes of like dread and know something 
bad is about to happen. <laughs> and you're sitting there, you're just worrying about it. Just like, mm-hmm. I know something bad is about to happen. When's it coming? Like, mm-hmm. I start, my heart starts to palpitate. I start, like, I, I am too, I am too, I don't know if the right word is high maintenance. <laughs> I, I cannot, I cannot I just confirm. allow something to be unfixed <laughs> in front of me, right? I can't, uh-huh. I'm not that kind of guy. Your intuition. So, I know something's coming. I just want to get it over with already. And then what the horror games and horror movies do, they just draw that make out, you wait. right? And I don't want to wait, man. I'm all about that instant gratification. Yeah, but you're, Dude, you're a I'm selfish explorer. bastard. I'm you're selfish, explorer, selfish so bastard. I like that feeling of like going into an unknown place. Like we used to, back in the day, I we had this too, old. But I just don't want to be terrified while I'm doing it. Well, here's the deal. That's what I'm getting into. So back in the day, we used to break into this insane asylum that was uh, been shut down for a long time. And it was six stories and then there was a basement sub level and then there was these this tunnel system that spread all throughout my city and what those tunnel systems did back in the day it was a quick way for an ambulance to get from the insane asylum to downtown to the hospital or up down to a different hospital so there's all these catacombs and stuff that you can explore and we used to go down in there with flashlights and a group of people and camcorders and ooh, all that shit and stuff yeah. and uh I can't do that anymore. Like, mm-hmm. first of all, we were breaking the law by going into there at the, at the time. You know what I mean? I can't afford to, to pay, you know, whatever trespassing, however many thousands of dollars it is now for a trespassing it's a fine. Lot. It's a lot. <clears throat> yeah, right? And I got to get those thrills. Like, I'm an explorer, man. Like, if I'm walking through the woods and I see a cave or something, dude, I'm going in and I'm checking it. I'm scoping it out. Because I like that fear of the unknown of, like, uh, like, should I, you know, be in here? Should I be walking across this rickety ass bridge? You know what I mean? I, I kind of like that. Like, there's definitely times where you're like, no, it's not smart to do that. But like, take a risk, man. I've had some of my some of my greatest experiences in life. I've I've taken risks and experienced some pretty cool stuff. You know what I mean? But other times, I can come back and bite you in the ass. You're right. There's nothing wrong with being too safe. And like, I totally get you with that anxiety feeling. But I feel like with horror games, long story like, short, if that's... I'm gonna choose to be entertained. I just that's not the mode of For sure. entertainment that I choose after. With that being said, though, there are some absolutely like master class horror games. I think horror, the genre of horror, is better done in video games than it because it's so much better at putting in the moment. As where a, a movie, like half the time, I'm distracted at just stupid ass decisions taken get themselves into these problems in the first place. I mean, they are like absolutely. Games that just can't be missed, even if they are in. I don't love; they're just not to be missed. Right. For me, this is an easy question. I, as soon as I saw um, stealth games on this list, and I can't stand stealth. Like, oh come on! It's so Metal fucking Gear? boring. <laughs> Metal, Metal Gear Solid though, boring? where it doesn't have. Oh. Okay, hear me. Hear me out though. Uh, okay, hold on. Stealth games that you have. Oh god, I would lost it. He's, he's, he's gone. Right there, he's gone. He's out. He's slouching. Stopped, he fell asleep. I stopped playing Dishonored Two for the exact same reason. I was like, so, oh so fuck this! Like if, you can't just run prim- in and kill people. You don't have to play yeah. it that way. If, if your primary objective is stealth, so like I, I kind of understand where you and Gary are coming from. If you can only be stealth and not kill anyone, not a fan. But if you have the option in like Metal Gear Solid to where like you can cap a few dudes up and then try to hide the body and stuff like that. Or if they do come search for you, you hide, you know, in certain areas. I, do the same way. I think that's really cool. I, I'm with you though. I don't like what, what was one of the first games that came Splinter out for the Cell? PlayStation four that tanked thief. Oh, oh God. 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 <laughs> it's on Revol- Look, this is Steve's first introduction on the revolver podcast. <laughs> we need to, to, to timestamp this moment. This used to be a big part of our old podcast. Briar played through Thief halfway through the game, probably even further, and he had it segmented on his YouTube channel, and he just gave up and quit. And I don't know why. It seemed like he was having so much fun with that game. Oh, my God. That game was so fun. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to All Over Live. <laughs> I don't mind. To- if you give me the tools to be stealthy, as well as other tools, like more of a... Uh... Like a game more like Deus Ex or Prey or something like that. Where this was like, remember oh, Crisis? Oh. Yeah, Crisis. Sure, a game where you have the tools to be stealthy and to go in loud. Mm-hmm. But games that force you to be stealthy, oh my god, they're just so boring. There are games that, like Hitman. Hitman forces you to be stealthy, but the payoff is so fucking good in Hitman with the ridiculous shit that happens. 
that I'm Ooh. willing to like sneak around, right? I'm willing to set up that moment. But man, for the most part, just like waiting around. Okay. So boring. Even Metal Gear Solid, like everybody loves Metal Gear Solid. Man, there was a lot of just like waiting around, looking at vision cones. It's smoke. Uh, what was that series on Xbox that was real popular? Was Sam Fisher? Splinter Cell. Splinter Cell. Cell. Oh my God. I remember playing the first Splinter Cell and being like, this is the most gorgeous thing I've ever seen. But fuck, is it boring? Yeah. <laughs> you didn't like the little <laughs> with the night yeah, there's vision. There's so much cool shit to it, except for the, the fact that I was just constantly standing still. Waiting yeah. for people to walk by. The worst thing in stealth games is the ones where they reset the level when you get seen. Oh yeah. my god! Like I've had so many of them where it's like you got spotted. Back to the start, just like oh, it's like any game. I hear you on that. Like for me, stealth games really, really piss me off just because it, it goes against what I want to do in a game. Like I don't want to be stealthy. Right. And I get that some people enjoy that, but yeah, for me, it's a real put off. You know, any yeah. game that forces me to do it. I got a question. So, if you remove the stealth uh, genre, does that include games that have heavy stealth mechanics as well, or games that are only stealth? Because if you in- include it, it all really games, it depends of- on how it's implemented. Because if 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 you are forcing me to sit in a dark corner and watch like multiple enemies and learn the pattern of how they walk around the level, when I have a perfectly good machine gun sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no nonsense as hell, bro. The reason I asked is because a game came to my mind. And I was like, I was wondering if that would be a victim, a victim to this uh, all-out ban. The Arkham games, Batman Arkham Asylum, yeah. uh, had heavy, I would say heavy uh, stealth mechanics as well. When you jump up on a ledge and you kind of watch what these guys are doing before yeah, you, you jump down. You around with stealth, but eventually you're going to have to beat those guys' asses. And they they came up with a combat, combat system that literally redefined the, the gaming genre, games. yeah, yeah, sure. So, like to call that a stealth game, I think. Okay, I'm just making sure that game was safe because I had a no, ball. I'll okay. tell you what's not safe: The Last of Us. That's a stealth game. Motherfucker, please. You know what? I'm gonna have to get on a plane and come over there. Don't there you even start with that. Parts of that game where I was like, <laughs> "Come on, how long am I gonna be just? Give me just ammo. Everybody be uh, happier if these guys are dead." I don't know, man. I don't really recall (laughs) much stealth in The Last of Us. I think it was more moments of just being afraid, not wanting to be fucking bitten by a quarter set, but to each his own, I suppose. And it was a great topic. Now, let's move on to the next one, which would be... Hmm. Let me see. The best video game introductions that you've ever seen. This is also my topic. And uh, I was thinking about this because, I, you know, sometimes I sit here in my office and in my own mind, I wonder how I got here as a gamer and what, what games have meant the most to me. And there's been games since I was a kid that I, I didn't know much about. But upon seeing the intro of the game, I immediately went out and bought the game. And so I ask you guys in the comment section, people watching us live, what video game intros interested you and and maybe stood out as some of the best you've ever seen in your life and uh i'll leave the floor to you guys i'm gonna answer this one first because obvious one he knows out of my mouth but it's destiny you start destiny and you're revived by your ghost fucking idea what's going on why you're there i it it set up the world of destiny in a perfect way didn't make any fucking sense it was really cool though, <laughs> and I wanted to know more. And be like the intro for Destiny, was kind of the perfect starting off point. Well, the first time I ever saw Destiny, um, they did a few live action, not just live action trailers, but they did a few live action commercials. And they actually had the dude who plays uh, Gus Freeman on Breaking Bad. He was reading, <clears throat> he was reading the Jungle Book to his boy, and it was the Law of the Jungle. And when he was reading it to him, it had some CG uh, Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. Uh, they were all doing their thing on the moon. They were sniping out uh, fallen captains and riding on their sparrows and stuff like that. And then uh, it cuts to a scene on Mars where Hunter pops his golden gun and bah, 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 you know shoots down uh, all these cabal. And just the way they set that up, I remember me and Sam 
I don't remember what we were watching, but we were sitting there and she looked over at me and she goes, what game was that? And I was like, right, that looked gorgeous. <laughs> and then the rest, I didn't, you know, the Bungie logo pops up. And I'm like, oh, shit, man. You know, so I, I, I could definitely feel you on that one. Like, that's a good one. But, but if I had to pick. It doesn't have to be one. It, it, it could be any. No, you if, know, I, had to, if I had to you. pick a different one and like this is. It wasn't really much of like an intro or like a cutscene, but like the game I was probably the most hyped for in my entire life was Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past for Super oh, Nintendo. Um, the opening, like if you it was the title screen, the Triforce comes in, the Master Sword goes through it. You know, Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past, and if you didn't hit start, it kind of set up the story as to what was going on and like why you were doing what you were doing, and uh, kind of told a little bit about like the history of, like, the Triforce and stuff like that. Uh, that game, I remember when I saw, like, Nintendo preview, like, that and, like, that intro screen, like, that's all I could think about for months. And I didn't get a Super Nintendo until, like, 1992 of Christmas, so I was, like, a year behind. I think it came out 91-ish. Could be wrong about that. I'm sure Chad will let me know. But I remember, like, there was a J.C. Penny catalog. I don't know if you guys ever did that as a kid. You'd look through the Christmas time J.C. Penny catalog, all the different toys and stuff. And I remember seeing a page that was completely devoted to that. And I remember I, I tore that page out and like took it with me everywhere, like read it like a million times, like a weird little kid would. And uh, that that to me was it was huge, man, because it it still played off. It still played off like the original isometric view of Legend of Zelda, but it had updated graphics, new items, obviously, things like that. But the jump from Nintendo to Super Nintendo was like, you knew it was going to be good. It's not like different consoles coming out now. Like, you know, Nintendo, you have no idea what their next console is going to be. Could be thought control, you know, instead of motion control. We don't know. Like... But you knew... These controls suck! Yeah, yeah, it could be uh, phallic controlled, you know what I mean? You never know, but like... I'm down. <laughs> yeah, but we knew going from Nintendo to Super Nintendo that it was going to be a super version of the Nintendo, and I think it's you had said deal. that before, Briar. And to me, that was probably the pinnacle of gaming for me, of gaming memories. Mr. Diaz, how about you, my friend? So there was an immediate obvious choice um, that that was there, but I've kind of actually had one this week that might have unsettled it. But it's a really understated choice. So I'll go with the obvious one first. Um, and that's any, well, I say any, Bioshock 1 or Bioshock Infinite. I was going to say any one in the series, but 2 was, was, was kind of didn't have the same impact. It was a slightly different tone they went for. But that first time of, of landing in the water and then, you know, getting onto the lighthouse and going down and seeing Rapture and then walking into it. And the second time when you get shot up in the air and you see um, Columbus, is it? Yeah, Columbia? I think so. New Columbia. I think so. Yeah. There it is, the city in the clouds, and you you see all that, and you go through like the religious imagery, and you get baptized, and that to me was re really powerful and set me up to. I knew what I was going in for. I I was immediately intrigued. I I saw the entire city that I'd be playing in, and then yeah. it let me dive into the city. You, you know, you saw the play zone both in the underwater and and the um city in the clouds. So that was was what I was thinking. But this week, I actually had the pleasure of playing Oxenfree on the Nintendo Switch. And I know it's an old game. Oxenfree has been out for a long time on PC, on Steam. I've actually owned it for a long time on Steam. I just haven't got around to it. But having it on the Switch, Oxenfree is an indie game, 2015. Um, it should have won Game of the Year then. It's a travesty it didn't. Witcher stole it. Um, but now, really? looking back at it, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic supernatural thriller. So it's not a horror game, but it's a supernatural thriller of some teens that have gone to an island you know like a when you like you say um wilson when you go to like a, a place that's shut down like an old military base or something edwards island is the place it's called and just some unusual things start to happen but the way that dialogue's handled in that game and the way that the teams talk to each other just feels like a real conversation between people and you're getting like you know um, new family ties discussed and, and the way that they're talking with each other and people that don't necessarily want to be there and who's going to go to the party and the way it unravels and for me it just felt like I was watching just a really really interesting um, team movie you know from the 80s you know something of that nature that's kind of felt really really good and it set the tone for the rest of the game the way it played through and had me immediately invested in characters that I knew nothing about um, it, they just felt real and felt human but yeah oxen free Hour 
club has. Man. Really? Yeah, You've man. missed out, man. You've got to put in like about four or five hundred hours before you start getting to the meat of that game. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Oxen Free is definitely worth picking up on the Switch. It's a great game. It sounds game. like it. I, you know, I think I've heard of that before, uh, and I've never even seen it. So, but you know, your synopsis there has really piqued my interest. You said you had a runner-up too, as well. What, what other game were you thinking about? That that was it. It was the was Bioshock said- series, and then <laughs> yeah, Ox- Oxen Free. I'd say. I didn't even know. I knew it existed, but I knew it was good. But with indie games, you know, me being the, the elitist snob I am, I tend to write them off. And just if someone tells me this is a great indie game, like Axiom Verge on the Switch, I've heard Axiom Verge is like an amazing shoot 'em up, you know, Metroidvania style game. Mm-hmm. Meant to be amazing, but again, I've, I've written it off. So it might be something I revisit. Completely and, yeah. developed by a single man, too, as well. Yeah. All right. So I, I got a couple I wanted to talk about. Um, maybe three or four that come to mind that have always been important to me as, as a gamer. The first one that comes to my mind is uh, Sh- Sh- not Shadow of the Colossus. Shadow of the Colossus. I'm thinking of their new game. But Shadow of the Colossus came out on PlayStation 2, I want to say in the mid-90s. And uh, this game, when I first saw the intro or the introduction uh, scene before I even purchased the game, uh, of you as this character named Wonder uh, going through this huge vast land uh, on this beautiful horse, this fantastic steed. And you had a, a young maiden uh, on your horse as well. And he's just going, you know, miles and miles and miles. And he finally gets to this huge temple and he, and, you know, brings her inside the temple and lays her down. And of course they're speaking in this game in a, in a dialect that's different than any real language here on earth. But you see the subtitles and you understand the 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 catastrophe that's happened and what, what he's asking for. And this girl is obviously dead. And the things that he has to do in order to bring her back. You, I just felt at, at that moment watching the intro for this game that there was so much more that was unexplained that I had to see. That was a good example for me uh, uh, as of a game that I didn't know much about. But upon seeing the introduction to it, 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 it laced my mind with enough question that I knew I had to go out and purchase the game. There have been games like that, God, uh, you know, throughout my memory for years. Uh, the Last of Us, of course, we all know the intro of that game was very uh, important, and, and it kind of laid the groundwork for what we could expect for the rest of the game. That was a great intro as well. I won't spoil it for people who haven't played it. But when I think about my past in gaming, I think about some older games, and notably some fighting games. I remember the Soul uh, Calibur game that came out in the arcade that just showed these characters fighting and it showed kind of the story of what was going on. And on the PlayStation 1, the original Souls Souls game called Soul Blade, it had some of the best CG that I've seen ever at that point in time. For Soul Blade, it kind of laid the foundation of what was happening in these people fighting. I just saw it. I was a teenager. I was like, wow. it's It was so beautiful that I had to just go out and buy the game. Mega Man 8. Just these intros that just... In my mind, just seeing them, I was like, "Okay, this is this is definite, definitely a game I'll buy." I, you know, I might waste my money, I might regret it later, but the intros alone just pulled me in. Resident Evil Two, you know, they're just flying into my mind right now. These games, Final Fantasy Seven, remember the Final intro Fan- to that? That really showed off man, the eight, PlayStation eight, One power. Like Eight was good too. Eight was eight really was good. great. Man. Actually, was- actually, I like Squall story the the intro of Eight more than Final Fantasy Seven when Squall had that fight. At the beginning yeah. of Final Fantasy VIII, oh my God, it plays through cool, my mind. man. But there's it was- seven, you know. There's seven. Which is, <laughs> hold on, let me put it so everyone can see it here. And then there's like other. Well, look. Let Final me just say this: Fantasy the story games. of Squall and Renoa, the actual <laughs> story of Final Fantasy VIII, wasn't as good as Sevens, but the intro for sure was. I'll give you that. The, the that intro, as well with the that, intro like, scene, church music and stuff. Yeah. Uh, when, when during that fight was definitely better, and the ending was better than Final Fantasy Sevens as well. Oh, uh, I, it, it there. Hey man, yeah. I'm just there. Just saying you. the intro, dude. You saw Midgar. You hear the train. It's all public around. Right. Then you see. Right. Then you see Eris. Like, dude, my first video game crush. Yeah, she it's walked out of the power ever. shop. Yeah, and then you see the train. You <clears> see Cloud <throat> jump out. That was cool. But I'm talking about just the CG at the beginning of Final Fantasy. Yeah, you're eight, right. And the ending of Final Fantasy VIII, when you see the things that have happened to these characters and how they progressed, and they've lost and they've loved and all this shit has happened. It kind of brings a tear to your eye. You see Squall and Renault at the end on their airship, and he walks out to her and he grabs her hand. Yeah, but you I swear. Seen, uh, thinking uh, about that shit now makes me want to cry. You haven't seen an intro for a Final Fantasy game until you saw the one for fi- 15. And the ending, Beastly, you saw it. No, I didn't. Oh, that's right. You never. 
You sack Dude, of shit. The beginning, <laughs> you're right, man. That song, you're you're can we talk oh, about the intro? The, to find, yeah, can we talk intro, about so. that? Where like you, the car breaks down and everyone has to get out and screw <laughs> you, bro. They get you gotta play that beastly. It's so good. You're pushing the car and all of a sudden you hear the <laughs> doom 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 doom. Really? They actually yeah. have a real real song? It, it? No, yeah. no, it's not. It's a, it's done by someone else, but it's fantastic. I mean it's the, the lyric. It's it, check it out, dude. It's so good. Like it's a female it really, artist, isn't it? It's, the, is it the, the, still Florence and the Machine? Is it I think it is Florence and the Machine that sings that version. <laughs> That's the think. last game I cried in was Final Fantasy Fifteen, man. Actually, you if know we what? Can flex games, I'm a sensitive to you, man. man. I'm a sensitive if we can man. flex the topic as well, man, there's actually a really underappreciated, a terrible, terrible movie, actually, probably not underappreciated. It is terrible, but with one of the best intros that actually, just if you watch the intro, you've seen better than the whole movie delivered was Wolverine Origins, right? Mm. If you've ever seen Wolverine Origins, the first two minutes of it, just watch that and you've seen a better movie than the rest of the, the, the sort of 87 minutes of it. It's got like Wolverine going from like, Every battle that he's been in American history yeah. with Sabretooth at his side, uh, they go through really like cool. so good yeah, transition in like sepia paint, where he's like going through the War of Independence, then he goes through like the American well, the Civil War, then into World War One, then World War Two, then Vietnam, and it's like so good. And then the movie's shit. And but then, then, and the, that's the one that had the the Deadpool uh, Ryan Reynolds with his yeah. mouth sewed up and yeah. laser eyes and all that. Yeah. But, but then the, the, the first, and the same as Watchmen. Watchmen was a good movie as well, but the first two minutes with Bob Dylan, the times they were changing of Watchmen, when you've yeah. got that jingle going yeah. through. And let's just watch intros for you know, movies for the rest Watchmen. of this show. Dick in it. No? It was a fair No, I saw that on the big screen, and that <laughs> dong was yeah, blues, little. man. It would give Beasley a run for his money. I'm just like, it's, I don't it know. What so I see you talking about? <laughs> Man, yeah. I had I had flashbacks of Zavala with that big blue dick swinging up oh, there, man. That was that oh big, man, big. <laughs> that's, that's all right. Next topic is get two thousand dollars to spend on a vehicle. All right, so, a little introspective, but really, what I'm doing here is uh, look at this. Like, what kind of vehicle would you buy? And what are like life priorities. Right? Why? Why would you buy a vehicle? Let's spend. It has to be three thousand dollars. Saying like, if imagine every car costs. Shit, you're, you're I'd spending, be on the bus. Like, buying a car. What are you buying? Like, what are the, your priorities? What do you want out of a vehicle? What are your priorities in life right? Now? I know exactly what I'd pick. Who you picking? <laughs> A fucking DeLorean, dude, is the only choice, dude. I want <laughs> doors that go <laughs> like that. You know, not this. Are you gonna? Are you this. gonna like have it like customized so it looks? Hell yeah, dude! I'm getting a flux capacitor, dude. That might even be my license <laughs> wait, wait, plate wait, wait, number. Wait, wait, wait. Figure out wait, how to abbreviate getting, it, right? Are you getting Back to the Future one DeLorean or Back to the Future two DeLorean? So is it gonna run on trash or is it gonna run on like cause, plutonium? Because it one is the superior Back to the Future film. No. Followed by second, then three. It goes in order two. of greatness. Three was two, horrible. one, three, two, one, three. No. One was good, but two. Was two better. was I. Uh, two was three good, was but Western? like one. Mm. Three wasn't good. Yeah, three wasn't that good to me, Wilson. Three no, I didn't know. I'm saying. I'm saying one's the yeah, best. One, two, two's yeah, one, the second two, best. Three. Yeah, third is sure. the worst. I, I don't ever have to. I don't even acknowledge part three as being in the canon. It just could wasn't you, really that good to me. Could you imagine rolling up to the party in a DeLorean with a license plate that says "Out of Time"? Like that'd be Damn. amazing, dude. Like, <laughs> and why? What are my goals toward getting this card so I could become a time traveler? Obviously, I would go back. Fair, I'd fix if fair. I'd fix a few things. <laughs> Like the day I decided to join this podcast, uh, and then uh, let's see what else. <laughs> maybe maybe the day I met Gary. I don't know though. I need some English muffin <laughs> in my life. <laughs> but no, DeLorean would just be dope. Like even if I had like the little canister on the back that I could just like at a stoplight randomly jump out and like start pouring trash in for no reason, just to, like freak <laughs> people out next to me. Like that'd be amazing. Like it would be. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Uh, who's got an answer? Beasley? Well, you know, I don't shop for cars in this price range because I got enough kids. I need to just stay. I, you know, $2,000 uh, used bucket, that's what I need. But if I had $50,000 to spend on a vehicle, my dream car would be the 2017 Cadillac XT5 Luxury All-Wheel Drive Edition. It's $47,000. Right, uh, it's, it's a Cadillac SUV. Yeah, and it's beautiful. It's all leather, and it has every amenity you could ever want inside of a car. I think it has a toilet in the passenger seat. 
but you don't want to be next to a person when they use it. No, it's 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 certainly uh, my favorite brand of vehicle. I love Cadillac. Uh, that's what I've always driven. You know, I had older Cadillacs. I recently sold one. And if I were to upgrade, it would it would definitely be that. I don't know if I have enough room for all my kids. My boys are old enough that they can meet me there, I guess. I just say, uh, you know, here's... <laughs> Wait, I bought those new sneakers. Use them, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, they're in the living room watching right now. Hey, look, man, you're, you're 17 and 16. Hit the road, bitches. And I'm still here's, hung here's up on this. Bus. This car has a bathroom somewhere. It has like a built-in bed. No, pan? that's that's the joke. That's a joke. Oh, it, okay. Because like, a car with a toilet. Would you want it? I got, well, no. Check it out. Because like, I knew a dude who like tried that one time. He had a hole in his floorboard. And he tried putting like a like you know like a like a hose that you'd like do like a beer bong out of or something, and he tried uh, putting he, it. You wanted to try and piss out of the car without stopping? Yes, because he was on the Amazing. road a lot. Now here's uh, the problem with that is that if you do dip the hose out, don't have it angling forward so that when you piss, all no! the air blows it back up oh, okay, into okay. you, and then that's what happened. Got jammed on. No, yeah. no, he went to pee in it. He went it to pee right in it, and in then he peed, he peed all over himself. Yeah, it, the, the force from True the story. air. Pushed all the piss back down the tube, right back into his dick. True story. Not into Jesus. him, onto him. <laughs> into him that... sounds a bit better, to be honest. <laughs> I like the Cadillac idea. Like, driving slow, you're relaxed. Yeah. Cadillac, basically, the miners, the percolators. Yeah, man. Oh. So comfortable. I like that idea. I I had a uh, CTS. I think it was a, no, it was a DTS. DTS is the big one, right? Yeah. I had one of those for a weekend because I had dropped my car off at the dealership, and that's all they had as a loaner. They gave they gave twenty year old me a Cadillac DTS, and we Amazing. went Damn. out. <laughs> we went Hell out. yeah, you did in it was style. Awesome. Man. I love that car though. It was it was just like drive as slow as possible all week. Just yeah. relax. It felt like you were just like lounging. In. Like, it's like driving a cloud. Yeah. <laughs> well, I hate to tell you that you're all equally incorrect. Uh -huh. um, what you need is you need, and this is my choice, the largest kind of Winnebago style vehicle that I could possibly have. I mean, I'm talking a coach, effectively. Uh -huh. But you guys say meet the meet the parents or meet the fuckers, whatever one it was yeah. that he turns up in that like that fucking armored vehicle thing. Yeah. And that you do have a toilet on. You got a shower, yeah. a bedroom, TV, satellite. Yeah. All that shit, and then you've got two nice passenger seats up front. So anywhere is your bedroom. You know, you just you don't have to have a house anymore. So you save money there. It's frugal as long as it's got a good internet connection. I'm set, really. That's that's kind of my new home. Well, if you so for me, it somewhere with a... get one. Otherwise... I don't know though, uh, uh, Gary. I mean, for 50k, do you think you can get you a nice one in Vega? We were just told that 50k gets me anything, so yeah, I think it's every about every car costs 50k. Well, shit, I want a spaceship. <laughs> well, there's well, you, your answer. Right, Gary, and you so I have be... a, I have a little experience with you, and they're okay. amazing. Okay? Like, <laughs> the, the time spent in it is awesome. You have a shower at the, you know, like literally accessible to wherever you are. Like, no matter what your lifestyle, a Winnebago, it's amazing, or you know, a camper van, or whatever, whatever form of this. One huge problem that I has kept me from ever purchasing, and that is septic tank. Mm. Really? Yes. Mm. <laughs> At some point, you're gonna have to empty that fucker, oh. and it's just not a job I'm willing to do. <laughs> but could you not find a Mexican at a gas station that do that for you for a few dollars? Aren't Surely. you Mexican, Gary? Yeah, I can. I can make as many racist jokes about the Latinos as I want because it's I'll basically do it for ten dollars. Just... It's self-deprecating oh. <laughs> at the moment, you know. At that point, there, I could, you know, I'm pretty much asking myself to do it. But yeah, surely there's a gas station clerk who'll do that shit for you. Oh yeah, for the right amount of money. Like Ain't nobody wants to. No, nobody wants to pump out of that thing. Nobody. No. <laughs> what have you made of all that you don't shit in the Winnebago? A lot of people do make no deuce in the in the deuce deuce in the. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> there's two ways you can do it. You can bring it to somebody who will fit out RG4. Or you can go to rest stop. There's a couple of rest stops, I think, on uh, 84. Yeah. But they basically have these pits in the ground. And you got to hook up a hose to your tank. your tank. And then you run the hose to the pit. And then gravity basically drains this. Sometimes it don't you don't drain it all the way. that hose a little bit. 
Oh. <laughs> Get that blockage out of there. Oh. Or if it's already full and then uh-huh. like you accidentally dip into it. Oh. No. You know what no, I mean? No, like, no. so it's 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 a That's hazmat. Poopy. I'm, I'm <laughs> I gotta watch some My poop videos doesn't freak me this. out. Other people's poop freaks me out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm willing to just not shit in the Winnebago. There's a rule that no one shits in the <laughs> no Winnebago. It's done. Winnebago. <laughs> If it's all like, you want, that's fine. But you can stop at a gas station and you shit in their place. We stop at McDonald's, you shit there. You don't shit in the Winnebago. Problem solved. There you go. Only, only person allowed to shit in your Winnebago is you. Not even you me. Know, I'm not massaging no, my own shit even, out of a tube. You don't even want to deal with it, man. <laughs> so there's, there's <laughs> something else feel- on the docket here. It says, you know, you get $50,000 to get, you know, whatever car. Doesn't yeah. have to be a car. It also says... Can be a creepy school bus, and I want to I want to clarify that not every bus is creepy, because I think that would probably be my second choice. And it's not even a bus that runs. I would like a broke down bus that doesn't run. Take the wheels off, get everything out of it, all the seats, turn, turn it into house. turn it into like the hippie lounge, man. Like bean bags, lava lamps, black really? light posters, you know. LED Marijuana? lights, all the. <laughs> I mean, wait, wait. So I just I want mean... to clarify: you're not buying this school bus. You're not. You're not picking up any kids in this school bus before you start taking them on this drug-addled station, are you? Wilson's got Wilson's got a wizard painted on the other side. <laughs> There's shag carpeting from floor to ceiling. <laughs> the thing doesn't drive, but for some reason, a couple hours night, I get up there in that driver's seat. And, you know, I mean, I, I'm up the door, where you going, man? You know, like. <laughs> I think I've no, seen one of them at Burning shit, Man. man. Like, like, bring bring back the bean bags. Those were dope, man. And if like, here's the problem with bean bags nowadays, is that like, first of all, you're not a kid, but secondly, there's not enough bean bags for everyone to have one. I felt like when you have some people sitting on the couch and like one person's feeling left out on a bean bag, yeah. if you got a bus with you know all this cool shit, nothing but bean bags, everyone's just kind of lounging and chilling. Like everyone's yeah. on. I'm I mean, all about like, like that Japanese. If you got six bean bags all in a circle, then everybody's equal. If you got four people sitting on a couch, but one person, he's like, why am I like the kid at this party sitting on a bean bag all like back, you know? Man. <laughs> yeah, it's much more like, it's much more like, you know, intimate and on the same level. It's kind of like uh, Japanese culture where they, you know, they're, they eat on the floor. Like not, I mean, not on the floor, but like, you know, they, they don't, God damn it, Gary. I know. <laughs> they don't. They, We've lost they, that one Japanese fan there. You know what I mean? No, yeah, it, my bad. I'm just I think it's a beautiful costume. Japanese people are amazing, and bean bags are Same awesome it. because uh, you know if you got enough of them, your wife can fall asleep in your lap every day. <laughs> Play how cool would that so, be? I mean, maybe maybe I have different terms of cool compared to you guys, but I think I just want to summarize: would... if we gave Wilson fifty k for a car, he'd spend it on a room to get high in. That's kind of what we established. <laughs> That bus only said. cost me a thousand bucks. What do you think I'm spending another forty nine grand on, bro? Got fifty k, and he's like, "You got a gutted school van somewhere that I could just get high in?" It doesn't <laughs> even <laughs> run. That's not one of the requirements. <laughs> just let me chill here, man. Let me get it to my place. Just let me be. Just let me get my mind straight, man. It's all right. I've got he some bean bags. said the cost him a thousand dollars. What's the other forty nine? Spit. Do your thing, just, Wilson. I like the you of, think, brother. You know, old carpet samples stapled to the windows. Just you know, that's a rude thing. carpet samples. For me next week, you know where to find me. All right, I'm in the bus. Like, is that bus on fire? Not going. Uh, to- <laughs> yeah. Great. Oh, well, we shit. think we've got the best answer for that question. Yes, clearly. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All right, we got to move on to gamer tags. How not to be? A... Uh, I gotta run to the bathroom, guys. All right. Well, what do you guys? Okay. Who, who? First of all, who uh, submitted this this uh, topic? So I can warm this one up. This actually came from uh, Blandy McBlanderson, which I I really like as a as Blandy. a gamer tag himself, um, and put this question forward. I'm going to read it in full, which gives Briar time to empty the lizard. Um, this was the email that we had on on Gmail from Blandy. He said, I was hoping that you guys could provide a service to the Revolver community. Some of us have children who are at an age where they're facing perhaps the really most important decision of their lives, choosing their first gamer tag or PSN ID. Sure. As parents, we want to help our kids avoid creating online names that our kids think are cool, but in fact will make them sound like douchebags. Which elements in a gamer tag should a parent veto unequivocally? Is having... 420 in a gamer tag ever excusable? 
is it okay to have MLG keywords in a gamer tag if they really are a no scope sniper god? With absolutely no reference to any member of this esteemed <laughs> podcast, I ask, is having your first and last name, including your date of birth, smart or just an act of idiotic self-doxing? I think that may be a, a slight swipe at me, but um, he also does redeem himself, Blandy, by saying uh, he usually defends American culture against foreign criticism. But I was absolutely right. And public restrooms should go to the floor with uh, floor to ceiling partitions. So what do we think of Blandy's topic? What? is acceptable in a gamer tags um you know i think uh, i think briar you've uh, you've you've seen a few gamer tags out there that you probably want to start some comments on so if i rolled up to you and i had xx bag of dicks xx in my gamer tag what would you say to me <laughs> i would say thank you for making the bag of dicks reference three consecutive podcasts <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Bag of dicks reference in three podcasts. Have you, have you been carrying bag of dicks for three podcasts why <laughs> please elaborate guys, the rezo cast was on wednesday DCP is on Thursday. Today on Sunday, we have another Bag of Dicks reference. <laughs> and, and there's no shame on this podcast, so we can dive in <laughs> to that Bag of What dicks. type of bag are you using today? Well, that's the question. That's, Beastly, what I'm kind of bag you are asked, you using? Beastly. If you had a Bag of Dicks or if somebody were to give you a bundle of dicks that needed bagging, what kind of bag would you choose? Something soft. Something soft. Yeah, or not even. What would you choose if someone told you to eat a bag of dicks? What in your mind does the bag containing said dicks look like? Sweaty. Mmm. Bloody. What kind of material. <laughs> uh, material. For some reason, something, I'm seeing something, leather. Something. Leather. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, if you got a bag of dicks, it's, I mean, like this, you got... it's the same as your Cadillac's interior. It's the... Yeah. <laughs> Sitting on the passenger seat. Hey, man, nice whip. What the fuck is on your it's a bag of dicks, buddy? Bag I, don't of dicks. Know, bag of dicks. I don't know why this comes to mind for me. If the I, car wasn't apparent... free, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> if, I, if I apparently have like some sort of subconscious thing for Santa Claus, but I picture like like Santa's oh, bag. Santa's <laughs> Yeah, like that's a big bag of dicks. Like if anyone's gonna, and those are those are worldwide, dude. He's been all over. Yeah, from yeah, oh, you get the international little ones from Japan. Dicks. International bag. bag of dicks. <laughs> See, I've immediately gone darker when you say I a bag. bag of dicks. I immediately think of severed penises. So for me, it's like a brown paper bag with like you've just been to the butchers. And you've got like a load of Ooh. kosher meat, like a bag of calamari or like lamb's kidney, sort of sitting there. You just got kind of severed flopped over penises in a paper bag that's kind of what what's coming to mind for me i'm not, I'm not like seeing these sack you know, yeah. like where like they don't put literally literally the the juices of the, the recently severed dick draining out the bottom of the burlap sack but he's an a itchy hemp bag. sack yeah i'm it's seeing like a paper bag like, like, you guys don't have butchers <laughs> there that put your meat in like yeah cling brown, film like you know like yeah, that thing and then they put it in like like, like an alcoholic yeah, like an oh. alcoholic drinking out of a brown paper bag, you know, to hide their shame. Well, to me, it's like just bought. It's not I to hide like... their shame. It's so you don't get arrested for public drinking. <laughs> so they can't yeah, prove like... what you're drinking by for just me, I've just by. gone. I've just gone into the dick butcher and I've I've ordered like a quarter pound of severed penis. And I just, you know, I, I'm not too proud of it. I want to get that home and, you know, goulash those those peni. Um, I'm so I'm just trying to get this through. Like, I want double straps to carry my dick. I don't want to like be in the. I get some iron on the constantly. The backpack is with the with the waist strap. Read that sound. My bag of dicks. Maybe something from like Gander Mountain, like a like a mountain backpack. Oh yeah, got plenty yeah, of room I, for all the dicks you could fit. Could sherpa like, all the dicks up to the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> Put in like a, a hunting bag or something like you use when you go, you know, deer hunting or something. That way. Nobody could tell what you're doing. To be totally How about like a trans case. Nobody <laughs> yeah, would be able to tell. There's only one dick in there, so it's only a bag of dick. Be but... like Antonio Banderas <laughs> with dicks inside Mariachi of a Mariachi style, man. Guitar. That'd be good. Yeah, okay. guitar case. Just drop them down. Yeah. Oh my god. Now, now, just so you guys know, I'm not like not like the rest of the hosts here. The only reason I'd ever go into a butcher shop and order a bag of dicks is so I could dick houses. Uh, kind of the way they egg houses, but that would be my only use for a bag Man, of dicks. That would be amazing. Could you imagine slapping a penis against a window from a I distance? I just throw them through the window. Like... You said dick houses for some yeah. reason. I like pictured houses made out of dicks. I didn't think that you meant like throwing Dude, the dicks at the houses. Or mischief night, whatever you call it, would be hilarious <laughs> if you had a bag of dicks throwing those things up in uh -huh. trees. And... 
Yeah, you you run up and put it inside like the little yeah. door knocker. Yeah. No, you throw it at oh, you somebody throw cuts it at the... you off in traffic. You just throw a dick at him. Yeah, you right in the window. <laughs> throw it. I'm right all the, the the most homophobic guy in town, so you have to go out there and make fun of him picking him up because he's like, Ugh. one mailbox <laughs> in that motherfucker's dick every morning, <laughs> or one, yeah. one in his mailbox could, every morning. You could undo your zipper and hang one out of it and scare people without getting done for public <laughs> indecency because it's not your dick. It's not mine. Hey, it's every, that's my saying every time I get pulled over. It ain't mine. <laughs> Can you imagine tearing it off in front of someone, just pulling it out? Yeah, done. Oh, Leave it under man. your wife's pillow as if subtle hint. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, I, I, you know just walk up to her like a cat <laughs> with it in your... <laughs> You what, like a, what would you get in exchange? What would you get in exchange for leaving that under your pillow? I'm thinking an old fashioned. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe you just maybe wake a up custom, and your pillow is going up and down like this. Maybe a custom <laughs> revolver condom? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Custom revolver happen. condoms. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We should, yeah. we should we should we should probably get back to the original question at hand here. Before we it's, do that, I just want to say that if I did have a bag of dicks, I would fuck people up by putting them in my pants. And I pull out a white one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and just smile at whoever the lady that is. is. The <laughs> ultimate mind fuck. Yeah. Literally. Could make a lot of money. <clears throat> but anyway. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, you had said um, specific. Uh, Sorry, Blanche Dick Anderson. <laughs> we That's... have stepped away. But we are back. Yeah, I'm bringing us back in. We got a little sidetracked, but it was totally necessary. We had to do it. Um, you had talked about gamer tags that had stood out. 420. And there's there's a bunch that I don't feel comfortable repeating, but some of the ones that I do feel comfortable repeating. And Briar, I know you're gonna love this one. Remember Hobbit Weed 420? That was the best gamer tag I've ever seen. All other gamer tags are uh, just pale imitations. Of this gamer tag. <laughs> <laughs> it was Hobbit Whatever, Weed however creative you yep. thought you were when you made your gamer tag, you're about as half as creative as Hobbit Weed 420. <laughs> it's true, man. It's kind of hard to top that pinnacle. Like, do, do you guys have? I know I, I don't want to put anybody on the spot. You don't have to answer this question, but are there any that like stand out? <clears throat> well, look. Let me just say this, and I, I'm not proud of it. My kids are watching this right now, and I shouldn't have done it. I don't know why I did it because I was completely sober when I when I gifted my my teenage sons uh, these names. I actually created these names in an MMO called Silk Road Online, but I I created two uh, PSN IDs for them. One is I'm a fuck you up, and it's spelled <laughs> I M A P H. Let me finish. <laughs> I M A P H U K Y O U U P. It's my uh, my you it's brand PSN but... called I'm a fuck you up. Yes, <laughs> and then you gave it to your child. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, now this is not only this is, not, this is also which is why she changed because look they 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 don't even they can't take credit for it and they think it was the coolest thing I gave it to them when God it had to been four years ago so my kids were like eleven and twelve and the other son got bad motherfucker spelled the same way. <laughs> So which one's bad motherfucker and which one's gonna fuck you up? I bad, to... my, bad motherfucker is my oldest son who's 16 uh, and I'm gonna fuck you up is, is Brandon, my 15 year old. Right. And I, so I don't feel like I'm able to answer this question. Right, from now on, basically, if we ever do trials as a team, uh, you that, and Kate are playing one. on those two PSN accounts. They're coming into Yo, our team. I, I want, I'm gonna fuck want. you up on my side. Right. That's, yeah. I want bad yeah. motherfucker on my team. <laughs> Bad motherfucker. We should all be bad motherfuckers. Which which (laughs) PSN is yours? The one that say bad motherfucker on it. I mean, one day they could really love it. (laughs) Actually, they love it now. Their friends think that they're bad motherfuckers, but they can't even they they can't even say the word. So it's like they're living a lie. That's hilarious. Oh, that's awesome. (laughs) I'm so sorry, Wendy. I can't answer your question because I'd be perpetrating like a motherfucker. The only ones I actually have a problem with, I, I don't really get offended by names online unless they're like Nazi related yeah, or or uh, racism related. It's derogatory. Yeah. I usually just report them and don't think about them ever again. Uh, mm-hmm. But I do enjoy the funny ones. Bad motherfucker is a pretty funny one. Hobbit weed, funny, but my kids actually came up with a couple of good. One was Darth Puddin, Darth like Darth <laughs> Vader, but the second word is that's Puddin. cool. Yeah, I that's thought that cool. was pretty good. And the other one was Phase Sweaty. Like phase the yeah. 
I thought that was pretty creative. Yeah, yeah, that is good. Those are funny. Yeah, that's not something you're gonna regret. Like you know, Ultra Killer Six Nine Four Twenty. Right. All up, Ooh. all up in your mama. Yeah. The best yeah. I've ever seen, and eight again, it's just in passing. I remember the name because I found it quite funny. He was, um, he'd, he'd done a play on Dunkin' Donuts and he had Dunkin' D's nuts, and I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> That's <laughs> yeah. good. That to me stuck my head, and I, I, I hope he teabags every single kill that he ever made. That's <laughs> awesome, Blandy. I just don't think we're mature enough to take this topic seriously. <laughs> True. I feel like having your child make a PSN name is your opportunity to troll them. Just do the most. <laughs> trolly shit that you know they're going to regret the rest of their life and be amused every time they log on and tell right. someone that PSN name. I, I feel now, like real, real quick right. though, Blandy, let me let me just say this. Um, having 420 in your gamer tag as a parent is probably not something you want your kids to do because when they become an adult and they go out into the workforce and they're in college and they're doing well, college, they probably are going to be talking about 420 a lot. But when they you know get out of college and they pick a career and they start working and become a professional in the workforce. Uh, and they want to, you know, play a game with their boss or play a game with their coworker, and and they log into PSN. It's like, which which player are you? Uh, Four twenty forever. Bad motherfucker, of course. You know, it all started. <laughs> it all started when he chose <laughs> the gamer tag, Snipes Four Twenty. Now he's hanging out in the school bus with a bunch of beanbag chairs. This guy, I don't fucking know. <laughs> that sounds like a cool guy. I want to hang out with him. As long as he's actually using a fucking sniper rifle, though, and not a damn matador or something. Hey, he's in poser. the wizard bus. He's in a private lobby with bad motherfucker, and I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> Where did it go wrong? Where did it go wrong? I remember you know, when we used to play with Gary Diaz 86. Those were the days. I just yeah. own it. That's, that's how you find out if your boss is cool. Yeah, you'd be you know find I mean? out. Maybe yeah. he's like, "Oh, your name is Crazy cool. X Snipes 420." What's oh, up, Hugo dude? Hugo in Hugo in chat had another good one that I I hadn't thought of in a long time. Oh, Bilbo yeah. T Baggins, mm -hmm. that is a good gamer tag. Bilbo T Baggins. Him and Hobbit Weed 420 have to be. Yeah, they have to meet. No, no, they have to have. They have to be friends. There's no way you have two very similar but yet awesome Lord gamer of the Rings style names. Yeah, that's probably that's probably somebody that's. That's probably somebody like Beastly that that they named their kids' accounts those Bilbo T Baggins and Hobbit Weed Four Twenty. <laughs> I feel so bad, but somehow I feel like you know they're they're more awesome than their contemporaries. Right. What's your name? I'm Bad Motherfucker. <laughs> I, yeah, bitch. <laughs> my brothers and my brothers, I'm gonna fuck you up. You Can gave them the best on names. That? <laughs> I need to spell Bad Motherfucker. <laughs> it's B A D M A P H U K K A. Oh, nice. Got to weigh that. Yeah. Away with yeah. the, the, I figured it out playing Silk line. Road because Silk Road, you can't name your character anything lewd either. And so, you know, I'm a fucking idiot. I'm those are my characters' names on Silk Road. And so I stopped playing that game and I was like, I could I could you guys want my Silk Road names? And they were like, oh, You're gonna gift us those names? I was like, Yeah, I'll gift them to you, son. I can't believe well, they named a game after a website. The Silk Road. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Did the game come out first, or I take it the it game wasn't came named out after the website. The... It was named after the actual Silk Road. Uh, it wasn't you, because of the. You website. had me confused there for a second. The first time he said, it, "I'm like, oh no way, I know what he's talking about." It just blew yeah. my mind that there's the similarities there. It's just if Sony ever gives us the name, name changes, you guys are gonna get you know have to get used to calling me bad motherfucker because that's now stolen. That's mine. Yeah, I've bookmarked right. it. I am it's ready happening. to appropriate that. <laughs> Con man in chat actually has the wallet from Pulp Fiction, the one that says bad motherfucker on it. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, oh, that's, really? right. that's what I was referencing when I was like, which one's yours? The one that says bad now motherfucker going on, to Amazon on it. As we speak to see if that's available. <laughs> <laughs> Amazon. Yeah, so I mean, I'm gonna fuck you up. It's pretty bad, but bad yeah, motherfucker is the baddest. Bad motherfucker, though, that's something. Yeah, well, you guys, my kids are in the living room smiling right now. <laughs> and and you're man. welcome, kids. You owe me when you grow up and get jobs. Twenty three dollars and fifty cents on it. Ooh, there's one seventeen dollars. Time. <laughs> <laughs> So the one that's five dollars more has free delivery. Who'd have thought? You know. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's almost like that. Five dollars is the delivery. Yeah, delivery yeah. cost. That's how uh, capitalism works. All right. So the next topic. I don't know whose topic this is, but it says, "What piece of technology from the last five years has been the most impressive?" Now uh, the stipulation is one piece of tech that has really made an impact. Who wants to go first? First of all, whose topic uh, is? I this? wanted to talk about this a little bit before we started going. The 
I, w- I made it five years because I was trying to eliminate cell phones from this. I think it'd be hard to not go with cell phones. You know, I wanted to, wanted to eliminate uh, internet, uh, but you mm-hmm. definitely choose something that's on the internet. Uh, but I was trying to, I was trying to narrow it down to get away from self. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll go first if you don't mind. My e-cigarette. Hey. Um, you know, say whatever you want. Oh, e-cigarettes are just as bad as cigarettes. You've never smoked a day in your life, dude. If you're saying that, I'm just gonna throw that out there. Like, no doctor has come out and put their physical name on a report saying that these are more harmful for you than cigarettes. Are they perfect? Are they completely unharmful? No, I'm sure they're not. It's a crutch. I'll lean on it. I used to smoke two packs a day, and I haven't had a single cigarette since I picked one of these up. I can feel the difference. Five, five, maybe six years since I've had one. Wow! And it's still a crutch, though. Like, I'm still on it. Like, I get it. I'm leaning on it. You know what I mean? The beauty of those is this. And a lot of you guys don't know. I used to smoke. I used to smoke chain smoke. I I stopped smoking in 2010. And I go through a pack and a half of Newport 100s every day. Oh, expensive. Newports? Yeah. And I I had a fucking horrible job. That was half my check. But Oh, shit. Yeah. I I was killing myself on that stuff. But one thing that I've seen from coworkers, people who are on vapes, you can actually wean down the amount of nicotine over time. So, I mean, you could even, uh, you know, get a vape that has zero nicotine in the actual pool. So you can start off at a certain level and slowly wean yourself off of it to the point where you really aren't even smoking anymore. You make, you make a good point, but nicotine's not bad for you. Nicotine okay. itself is not bad for you. It's the carcinogens and all the other bullshit that they put in regular cigarettes and the fact that, yes, you are smoking or you know what I mean? There's a lot of nasty chemicals in regular cigarettes. You know what I mean? Like nicotine yeah, yeah, on its own sure. is yeah, but not the bad nicotine for you. is actually it's it's very addicting, is what I'm saying. It is, it is. But that's so the can, aspect I'm talking about. So is destiny, quartz. so is Coca-Cola, so is I mean, I've got a question know, for you. Diet Do, Coke is the strongest addiction I've ever had in my entire life, and I I can't get off right. of it. Just like me and my wife, Briar. I can't get off of it. Wilson, do those vapes work for crack? That's the question. Can it win mm. you off that? Mm. I could uh, I could make mix you up a special blend. Right. I was gonna say because it'd be no good for me if it's confirmed. <laughs> if it don't work for crack, I'm sorry, it's not gonna gonna work for can me. You, but, can um... you low fat loop? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Plumes. I see the clouds. I want to see. Oh clouds. no, I can't. I can't do like the wisps and the. Uh, I can, I don't. Well, you, you can get a no shit ton of smoke. There's a I, guy I work with who drives a truck, and when he's driving, he blows out the passenger window. It looks like his truck's on fire. You can get a lot of smoke in this. Yeah, yeah. It's called Shout that's out called to Buffalo. Hell, that's hella vapor grind, is what that is. <laughs> uh, you know, and like I get it, dude. Like vapors have a really bad stigma because like I've met those people that, you know, they want to walk up and they want to tell you all about their vape and like how awesome it is. And like people me ask of me. Vegans in Yes. Yeah. Oh, wait, you vape? I've only known you for 20 seconds. Thank you. Um, how, do you how do you know yeah, I couldn't, somebody's a vapor? They fucking yeah, you. I couldn't tell. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I thought there was just, you know, a giant fog settled in that you stepped out of. Like, you know, like, I thought that was just your grand entrance, like WWE. Like, <laughs> oh, he's man. here. I, I might right. go buy a vape tomorrow. <laughs> Dude, just, I got you at Guardian Con. I'll just vape everywhere before you enter, and like, it'll be good. Amazing. Um, but like I get those people are really annoying, you know what I mean? Like I get it, and that can be with like any obsession or hobby. Like they want to tell you about it and stuff like that. I just looked at it as a good opportunity to not like smell really bad, and like I'm getting older, and like you know I got pets and stuff. Like I don't want them like suffering because of my shitty decision. I didn't start smoking until I was like 18, 19 years old. I made it all the way through the peer pressures of high school, and then. Mm-hmm. Just started partying really hard and decided to pick up cigarettes and it was just a bad choice. And then I started doing construction and there was no one there to tell me that I couldn't have a cigarette. So it was two packs a day, you know what I mean? And I've never felt better since. Like the whole um, smell, I could smell better. I can keep up with my dog at the park. I haven't really noticed anything with taste. Good. I mean, you know, I I worked in a heat treat. I still do actually. I run a laboratory now, but um, in Ohio... I worked at a heat tree and I was trying to stop smoking. And uh, inside these type of businesses, everybody's running these huge furnaces, Austinization, and everybody's smoking. And so it was really hard for me to fight the peer, the peer pressure back then. 
and get off of it. But you're right, man. I mean, I haven't vaped. Um, I've never you. done it. I, 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 I quit cold turkey, believe it or not. Dude, that's that's gangster is what that is. Yeah. Quit yeah. cold turkey, dude. Fuck, man. Good for March you. March 8th, 2010 was the last day. But um, after I quit, that feeling, I mean, what you're talking about, you probably feel exactly what I'm – I know what you mean. Yep. All that the issues that you have when you're you know doing it all the time just melt away. You feel so much better. Mm-hmm. I'm real happy for you, Wilson. Thanks, man. Briar, this is your topic. What is your technology in the last five years that is epic? It's changed your life. I mean, I, I could go with a hundred different things that I have sitting right that enable me to do YouTube and okay. Um like that that's definitely the I could go with the PC that I mean Honestly, since I've been PC gaming, I've enjoyed video games. Uh, PC has gotten so much easier to use, but if we're really going to be honest. It's got to be the flashlight, right? Just the thing is unbelievable. It's a godsend. It, God she's, don't mind, man. She, she's there when she's not there. Right. It just It's liberating, I would say. I, would say I thought you were going to say lubricating. I, do you know what, also Brian? You, you, <laughs> you stole my point. But I wasn't going to go with it because actually the Fleshlight was founded in 1995, so it's 22 years old. Damn, Briar, five years. And anal beads, you I, can't I use mean, those you've only, like a you've only got into it five years ago. I've been, you know, 22-year veteran. <laughs> I was there. I was part of the Kickstarter eight. program. You know, Did you I was look there. up the patent on the Fleshlight to see when it... I've, I might have in the past wikipedia a Fleshlight uh, once or twice just to know exactly what I'm purchasing. It's one of Fair my enough. favorite things about playing video games with Gary is that you're always kind of on Wikipedia, just like looking <laughs> shit up and telling us about it. He's got like a fucking 12.0 KD at the end of the match, right. and he's sitting here and he's like, he's like, right, I got four different angles of the hurricane up on my monitor right now. And I'm like, dude, you just got a we ran out of medals. What are you doing? <laughs> I just like to know things. Sometimes I recall little bits of facts and nuggets that I like, and I happen to know that the Fleshlight was founded in 1995. There were variants added later. Um, they added like the moustache. Mr. Moustache um, was added eight years ago. But, yeah. <laughs> You're like the Johnny Five of the internet. Like, input, <laughs> input. You're just going through. Like, doesn't matter what it's about. Uh, real quick, for the guys in, in, in uh, chat who are saying that Briar is having audio issues... Uh, we'll get that figured out, but you can always hear the entire podcast on Podbean or iTunes, yeah. uh, and it'll be uploaded by tomorrow. So you can actually hear what he said because it was actually pretty damn funny. And this is the episode we're trying to not be funny. I think we're doing pretty good. So Fleshlight it is. No, you can't use that, Brian. It's 22 years old. You got to go with five years. Uh, I'll, go, I'll go some dumb which I don't know, like life-changing and you know, oh, invited yeah. my, me and my family with it's a distant like second that. to flashlight, though. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> a distant so, second. I was terribly disappointed when I couldn't use flashlight, and I found out the facts and figures on this one, um, and realized that whilst again it's been a strong part of my life in the past five years, it's, it should have been there for longer. I'm actually going to go with something that, as well, was was invented a lot, lot, I guess, longer ago, but has come back into the commercial sphere in the last five years, and that's VR. Um, at least current gen VR. Gary. All right, you know what? You can you can have VR then if you want. You can have VR. Can we share? Um, it? We can, can we share, just share it. Share? Okay, this can be we the can start of a new it. thing, Gary. You and I holding hands. Go ahead. Oh, I'd rather hold junk, but if we have to hold hands, we'll do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll, start, I'll start from the hand and sort of. I want. Oh, I had a poster of that face. That beastly face. She's like. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. I'm driving the car, you're in the passenger seat, I'm going for the gear stick, but I'm sort of sliding a little bit too far over on one. You know, just just keep going. Just Don't worry, it's natural, whatever feels good. Just, just go with it. Um, yeah, so <laughs> back to the talk of VR. For me, um, as a, a piece of technology that can revolutionise and change lives, I think this is the first time we've seen VR that is commercially viable. And yes, it's the top end of what I'd consider to be commercially viable, but they've recently dropped the Oculus down. The summer of Oculus is now indefinite. So you can pick up an Oculus with touch for four hundred dollars. Now to me, really. that's... if you think about it, that's you get two controllers in there, which any controller is going to be dollars. So two of those, you get the base station, and you get the headset, which is selling that for four hundred dollars. Wow. Yeah, I mean it's not much more. Well, I think PSVR is four hundred dollars. Yeah. And you still need a PlayStation to work with it. Granted, the base PC is a little bit more. Um, you probably get a, a 
six hundred dollar VR capable PC now. I imagine with what the minimum specs are. I but, would argue that you'd want to. Yeah, I mean, you would. But I'm just kind of thinking if you're on a budget, you've got it. I'm I'm just thinking now where it is. But what I've noticed is more and more retail um, applications are starting to use VR. So the new big hotness uh, at Disney World that I just went to this year, the two new big rides that they've got are both VR rides. So people are starting to get more and more accustomed to VR being um, an entertainment source. So they've got a 30 minute, you can pay $30 and it's a 30 minute Star Wars themed VR experience that you go, it's, it's like based after Rogue One where you're like escaping um, like an Imperial base with some plans or something of that nature. But it's like a, a, you just pay $30 for this one off ride, this experience they've got at, at their, at their uh, it's not in the park, it's outside it. Um, and then their new avatar ride that they've got on is what they call like mixed augmented reality. So you put on the headset, but you can kind of see through it as well with the screen. So all of the new um, immersive entertainment rides are all using VR. And we're getting that kind of top end consumer technology in our homes if we're fortunate enough to have VR. So I think the the headsets that we've got, right, I think we were just early adopters. I think we're going to see more and more. Uh, Pimax has got Easter. a new 8K set out that has like a huge field to do. Uh, that apparently is a very, very nice head. Uh, Oculus has been talking about a couple they got coming out probably. Like the next gen, I think, is. PlayStation has a new one that's coming out very soon as well. Well, it's uh, not a new one. It's, yeah, the... it's, mo- it's I'm, modeled. It's I'm their model. I'm waiting two. for VR. It's not the to model, put... too. It's like a revision. Yeah, it's an improvement. It's like it's they changed where the headset was fact that the cable is thinner, thinner. now yeah it, calling it version two i think doing something okay. i'm just kind of waiting for vr to catch up man like for other things in gaming like <clears throat> it, just the idea of virtual reality gaming you know sounded cool when i was much younger but like now that i'm getting a little older like i just want to chill like and play a video game and it feels like it feels like it's just so much like you know i'm trying to get over and get my water and i got my vr headset on and i'm spilling <laughs> let me know. tell you what happened to me the night before last i bought some new vr games on psvr because there's this big vr sale playstation vr is a year old so they had a ton of games i'm trying to remember the name. i think it's called mortal blitz which is um a shooter and it's like a space shooter and there's like these vampire type creatures and of course space marines that you're shooting against. It's one of the best feeling VR games I've played on PSVR, believe it or not. It was only like seven or eight bucks. It's normally like 20 or 25. Uh, but I had a full glass. I bought a huge bottle of wine. Kate and I were drinking it. And so she was going to bed. I had one final glass of wine. So I sat it on my little end table and I put the VR headset on and I got really into this game. Ended up beating it that night, but I knocked the shit out of that glass and there was wine all over the floor. I That's mean, I'm saying, I, man, you could and, spill and it was the wine, last of it. water, a water to, pipe. I was already, you know, tipsy. I was tipsy to get down Ooh. and suck it out of the carpet. And if Ooh. Kate walked into here, she probably would have thought I was drunk and thought I was fantasizing about her. Who knows? Was Maybe it, she should have came back. Are you a red wine or a white wine? Okay. I can go either way. White yeah, wine pink, when I'm thinking about Moscato my wife. Moscato kind of man. Shut yeah. up, Gary. That's not, that's not <laughs> public information. Okay? <laughs> Shit. Pink Moscato tastes good when you're in the mood for it. God damn it. <laughs> the but, thing uh, that I want to use VR for is I want to <laughs> use it to visit places that I wouldn't normally be able to visit. Right? So I want to go to the, the Taj Mahal. I want to go to, I guess I can go to the Smithsonian. But, like, uh, you know, the places that I, I, I have this problem with planes. Okay? I don't like them. That's all I'm going to say about it. So it's very hard for me to want to go see Stonehenge or the pyramids or all of Japan, Japan, you know, or maybe the faces of Easter Island or the, the, what the, the, uh, the Nazca lines or whatever, you know, just all these different things that I'd love to see or different museums in other countries that if I could put on a VR headset and maybe pay a five, $10 ticket for a couple hour to go take a tour of a museum or something like that, I think. Yeah, man, I was going to say, Google Earth VR, that's like 15 minutes work. You can hit all of them. Really? Damn it. Yes, VR doesn't have it. Yeah, I no, wanted Google to Earth I could VR go into like... museums and stuff. Like, I mean, not just, obviously, no, Google no, no. Earth. No, no. Okay. And you 
can do a couple of museums. So there's a couple of apps on Oculus that are actually in the, the curator's gallery that they've put a couple like the museums have sponsored it to happen. So you can walk around the inside of certain museums. I don't know if it's the Smithsonian, but there, are, there is a couple on there already. Well, um, like you can people, start walking around. I want people yeah, to make like, like Zen gardens and stuff that I could go into if I wanted like a, like a long day home from work and I wanted to just come <laughs> home and maybe a, attempt I know meditation. Where this is going. Attempt a meditation for once in my life. You know, if I could just have like a Zen garden, if I could go in, have, you know, maybe be on top of a mountain somewhere with. <clears throat> if you could wear a headset and be inside of a bus any with beanbags <laughs> and curtains on the wall, sorted. Just there are actually really some it. really cool apps that. They can have. Yeah. Let, let me real quick uh, move move away from VR. I said that that was going to be mine, but Gary, he kind of made better points than I was going to make. Something in the last five years I think is really cool, and I think a lot of people are benefiting from it. Some people maybe not, is higher resolution televisions. I think 4K, 5K uh, have been big changes uh, and, and well worth the price of admission when you have the right hardware to use it. Uh, I didn't have one until I bought my PS4 Pro. But uh, to have it and to see films and to play games in higher resolution, it's always kind of, you know, it's a breath of fresh air to be able to see things through a different lens. And of course, we know, like you guys are talking about 8K and all this stuff coming. But right now, within the last five years, I think that, that the standard of 4K has been a, made a big uh, impression on monitors. And I think it's really cool technology. Do you guys agree with that at all? No, you guys are all wrong. Damn it. Uh best thing that's ever in the last five years lighting uh for your house i have rgb i don't know if you but the lighting in your house with your phone and it's gorgeous you can have a flash with the stick you can have it pulsating you can have Ooh. it wake you up it can put you to sleep i want this on my RGB bus everywhere it's beautiful it's <laughs> technology in the bus Hell yeah i want this on the bus it's definitely man. in the bus man you can get RGB for the back of your monitor so it reflects on the wall behind the same colors that are on the monitor. I mean, RGB is the future. And Damn. Uh, if you are an RGB denier, I don't want to. Damn, you're like Eminem. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping it down. Yeah, I I need some RGB on the bus, man. I used to be into that with my um, Xbox 360s. I'd take the top off, cut out like holes in it and basically in the shell and then line it with plexiglass underneath and then do like little strips of led lighting and stuff that was always fun didn't a little rgb the... no it didn't but it would eventually <laughs> red ring out so at least you had other colors to deal with by the time the thing <laughs> fucking shit on you for the ninth goddamn time I think I want to invest in that but <laughs> you've been you've been talking about these lights for a while and you know I always want I almost oh, man, always want to be RGB. with you, Brian. RGB, man. RGB. Everything. Can you use them for like intimate time? Yeah, man. No. Fuck you yeah. There is. You want to get is a specific setting that goes on when you radio. It's I've been feeling dry, baby. You got to get that lighting right there. Is it like the red light me. special? Oh yeah, it just no. pulses. <laughs> pulses. Man. And then as the song goes on, it gets a little faster and a little faster, and then it slows down. Then it slows down. Does it, it stop like again. when you hear kids <laughs> knock on the door? No. What you need again, if you're gonna get, if you're gonna get freaky, this RGB lighting and stuff. No, that's yeah. that's completely setting the wrong tone for me. Okay. I like a pink neon flamingo flashing on the wall, right? <laughs> and a lot and an old sketchy lava lamp on the side. That that would yeah, be yeah, 80s style, fucking Miami sketchy. Vice style over there. That's it. <laughs> sketchy don't, about lava lamps. I think a classic. When you've got something working, why do you have to fix it? You know, <laughs> if I, if I could grow a Selic mustache, I'd be rocking that too. But I, you know, not not quite there yet. It's but almost I'm there. Boned by Don Johnson, pink flamingo around. <laughs> <laughs> Has to happen. Sitting. I'll roll up the sleeves on my white blazer and just accept it. <laughs> Sometimes it. you oh. wonder in, in the deep dark recesses of Briar's mind where this shit comes from. Experience like mainly. <laughs> yeah, mainly <laughs> experience. <laughs> shit. Mainly just life. <laughs> Things well, haven't gone guys, smoothly up to this point, Beastly. <laughs> this is, uh, you know. <laughs> how do I know you guys? <laughs> this is insane. 
you know what? I, I really wanted to call out the fact that this is our not funny show. We've gotten a lot of comments uh, recently on Twitter and on, on YouTube about the fact that this gaming podcast has become the funniest thing that people have been seeing on the internet. So we've attempted to pull back a little bit so that you guys are able to just digest the gaming content. Hopefully today you didn't laugh more than twice. And if you did, please let us know in the comments below. And as always, if you guys would like to be a part of the show, like so many of our other viewers, submit your topics for consideration at revolvergamescast at gmail.com so you can be a part of the show and have your topics read by one of our amazing hosts. Should we, should we do. do that one of these days? Do like an all user submitted yeah. show one oh, of these you days? Want to do that next week? Yeah, plenty. We've got plenty of stuff. Yeah, we've got a. You want to do it catalog. next week? Yeah, it'll give me. That'd be dope. To I'm going to be honest. The the, the viewers <laughs> the viewers topics are actually far funnier than ours, so I'm uh, okay. I'm happy to have them. Tell you what, since we've got people who probably would like to submit topics for for next week's show, let's do four topics from our catalog. From, from previous uh, viewers and give two spots to people who submit it for next week, this week. We Would you guys like to do that? Fire through them. Yeah, if we got 50 topics, we... All right, well, we we'll figure it out behind the scenes, all nude. We normally don't wear clothes when we talk <clears throat> privately, guys, but, uh, no you, know, you know, Twitter and YouTube, they always say shit when clothes start coming off, but we'll definitely, uh, you know, hash this out and get it figured out for next week's show. And uh, it'll be all about you. All what about you. This week, I'm following somebody who decided to publicly shame somebody who sent her a dick pic on Twitter. So she reposted it publicly. I'm like, why is there a picture of a dick in my timeline? Really? <laughs> and I was like, well, I understand that you're trying to shame the person who sent it to you, but you just sent a dick pic to everybody who follows you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you just dick picked the web. <laughs> the effect that you were looking for here. Yeah, yeah. Technically, <laughs> technically you've sent thousands of dick pics. It's, it's just made me feel inadequate about myself, so thanks. <laughs> Have people been trying to contact you since you sent that picture, Gary? I tried, but no one was interested, to be honest. I wouldn't be interested if I saw that. I to be fair, that's how we met, and I, I just went for me. Yeah, I left my number written down the side of it in, like, ballpoint pen. Just like that. I, call called, me. I called twice. He never called back. Well, it was it was an eight digit number, so I had to actually go onto two lines. I couldn't quite. It doesn't matter. So, like, Twitter is the new that public restroom. Okay. It is. That yeah, overseas so number about, was too long for his thing. <laughs> it was. While we're talking about pimping out things as well, we're actually almost up to a hundred subscribers on Podbean. Or followers, whatever they want to call it, people that click the notification stuff. Love you. We're at nine, I think we're at ninety-six. So if four of you um, decide to follow or subscribe on Podbean, uh, that will get us over the hundred, and that would make me feel better because it's three digits rather than two. Uh, secondly, if you could leave us any reviews on iTunes, that's the, the little golden stars um, and a couple of words. At the moment, we've only got one review, uh, and it definitely wasn't from me. So if anyone else wants to add that. Then uh, that would be fantastic. I don't believe that for a second. <laughs> well, the review said it's this isn't from Gary, so I'm going to believe the reviewer. <laughs> <laughs> they make they bring solid evidence to the table that they're clearly uh, I mean, not Gary. Oh, who are you to question? <laughs> who are you to question the person who made the comment? You can't question exactly. them. I'm, yeah, my yeah. Eaten. Yeah. Don't don't assume their identity. You don't want our. You don't want to paint the picture that our view, viewers are liars. Everyone who watches oh, the show our listens. Hosts are liars. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, I can't help you there, Gary. He's, <laughs> he's probably right. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> All Never right, mind. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. See you next week. Love you. Goodbye. Maybe I'll forget. I'll uh, remember.